Hi there. Hey, how's it going, Katie? <laughs> Good, thank you. Katie McLeod, how are you doing? I love that From name. From the McLeod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, what I'll do is I'll, if I need to, I'll snip the, the front and end of this and just call this a recording, just post it on uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, well, you're, you live in uh, uh, in London. Huh? I lived in London for a couple of years. I lived in East Ham and West Ham and Nottingham. And, <laughs> and, 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 then, and then I went up into Grays and then up to Norwich and then Hitchin and then wow. uh, I lived all over the, the central part of uh, England. What part of London do you live in? Uh, north. So basically you've got zones, zone one being central London, the city. You've got maybe up to ten zones. I live in zone five. You're talking about um, the so tube? Like suburbs, really. now, is, that, is that based on the tube system or is that based on... Uh, the burl, uh, burls, because I thought the burls each had their own little names. I didn't, they I do have burls, yeah. I, I, guess I have no idea what you're talking about with zones. So, and yeah. I live there, so I have no idea. But then again, <laughs> I lived there, uh, oh, 1990, 1989 through 92. So that was a long right. time. That was a long time ago. Is that what brought you here, or, or what's or that? What brought you to England? Oh, I grew up a Mormon and uh, went on a mission, and my mission was in North London. And then I met my ex-wife there, and then uh, actually met her in front of an wow. abbey in front of Bury Santa Edmunds, and uh, knew what the meaning of life was and everything at the age of 20, 21. I, I was so smart. And the Mormon church was the only true church. Yeah. And uh, boy... That just went down. It just got worse and worse after that. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I don't know your testimony, but obviously you've read mine, so I don't know your story. But I'll be yeah, we, we got it. we got similar we got similar things. Oh, by the way, anybody that's because just in case we leave this as the beginning, why not? Um, do you know uh, Jared and? Like Tom, 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 he lives in the same state as me and Jared and, and uh, Tom. I've been on their show and they've been on my show. And yeah, I listened to uh, the interview and then, of course, through Laura Maxwell. And I was like, hey, I should reach out to Katie because, you know, it sounds like we have a very similar yeah. life experience. Really? And as far as, you know, the whole... Um, you know, truth or move it, movement thing, the old trying to find yourself, the old lost uh -huh. soul for the most of your life and trying to fit uh -huh. in, you know. Sure. You know, a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. It just doesn't <laughs> work very well, does it? So. <laughs> right. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, it's, uh, but you, you don't have a YouTube channel yet. Yeah, I know. I've, we're kind What's of right at the end, but censorship starting now and things, and it's What's as wrong much with like you? I start. <laughs> if you need some help getting those YouTube channel started, I mean, if you need any advice, and then you know, you, you know, mirroring videos and all that, you know, I'm more willing to help you. And uh, uh, I think you know, when it comes to you making this video that you want to make, um, you know, with using all your dossier of information that you've gathered. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, you're going to have to do this yourself. You know what I mean? Right. And it's not yeah. that it's not that difficult, really. Just using um, Movie Maker and uh, uh, you know some video converter. All this is free. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I use quite a lot of different software packages, so I'm dab handy at sort of picking up things like that. AutoCAD, so I've Photoshop more more than like movie. Um, stuff, kind of animation stuff, but yeah, just um, it's just just the motivation, really. Like, <laughs> yeah. and then thinking, there are so many other people that put this con uh, amazing content, this amazing channels like Days of Noah, Canary Cry Radio. You know, I mean, there's so numerous ones for me doing it far better, but um, you know, sure. maybe, maybe. You know, it's interesting you brought up very towards the end of your interview with Jared. Yeah. Uh, about the fact that she wanted to figure out a way to compile all that information into a very short message. And it, it would. And by the way, your thought is, that many of us have thought this, you know, and it's a, it's a very valid thought and quest. But there's a darnest thing. 
It's called the Bible, and it's called the the Holy Spirit. That's what, you, that's what it comes yeah. down to. <laughs> This is the thing. Thing. If you want to put it all in a nutshell or comprise it and say, this is what it is, listen, read this book, and, but you can't just read this book. You see, the mistake was that I did and so many else did is I didn't fall on my knees and beg for the Holy Spirit to, to actually turn it to become alive so that I would understand it. Sure. The meaning, true meaning of it. And then so you go through this whole endless uh, minefield of False Christianity, false religions, uh, basing your on your own understanding, the understanding of other people, and you go from here, 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 and you're like a ping pong ball on the mm -hmm. ping pong table, going back and forth until you finally realize, hey, maybe I should trust God. Whoa. It's true, <laughs> and you know, I was trying to send out materials to people like that dossier that I put together. You know, my with my starts off with my testimony goes into kind of. Um, explaining all the end time deceptions um, and kind of unpacking those a bit so people can see that there'll be a false messiah, etc., and the giants, the return of the gods, all that kind of stuff. But I was sending them all this stuff, but it was lacking a lot of scripture and the word of God because I wasn't trusting that the word of God can, you know, pierce, pierce someone's heart and do the work that only God can do in the Holy Spirit. And the, so it's like putting trust in all these other things because that's kind of how I came to faith, was through conspiracy kind of to, to Christ. So it's true. I mean, I'm very convicted of that. Just, Goes back to the gospel, really. You just keep going back to the gospel, but yeah. I know, and it's the thing yeah, is, yeah. is that you think about it like from your own perspective, and you, you know, you look at yourself and like myself, and it's like, man, you know, somebody was uh, in the state that I was prior to 2011, even actually 2012 is when God finally got a hold of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, prior to that, that, I wouldn't have opened that book for my life. No, yeah. I wouldn't have done it at all, so it wouldn't have made Even as a Mormon? How long were you a Mormon for? Well, I grew up a Mormon, and, uh, uh, and towards the end of my mission, then I, I yeah. that was it. So, like most Mormons, missionaries go on a mission, by the time they're done, they um, the vast majority of them leave the church through their Mormon mission. And so, because, wow. you, know, you know, of all the things that, you, whatever it may be, so... Some people go back, you know, it's kind of like the Roman Catholic Church or other churches. They go back to what is familiar and they want to raise their family in something that uh, is grounded in something that has morals and all that. You know, the whole Babylonian system that everyone's under. So. Right. And uh, so, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, so I haven't had a chance to go in great detail uh, or even much, really, into the, the, the files that you sent me. Uh, and I apologize for that, but, you know, I haven't had any time, really. It was, like, what, less than 48 hours. So. And I'm in the <laughs> middle of reading the whole Bible on the talk show uh, part of the show, which is a community call, and I just read it. And I'm now in the towards the tail end of uh, Numbers, Book of Numbers. And, okay. Uh, so I'm going to read that whole thing. Um then in the middle of doing a video of actual physical evidence of the proof that demons are real, and it's super easy to do, and I'm doing that from photos from in my town, and actually in my backyard, my neighbor's yard, not in my backyard, in my neighbor's yard. I saw those, and I was like, what is he on about? <laughs> I'm on about, you know what's funny is... Uh, well, it started like, out last year. A guy got a hold of me and said, "You know, you're going to go look into Bigfoot." And not that I was yeah. ever interested. I'm 50 years old. And I never was interested in it. And then, uh, as time has gone on, I've discovered uh, through intensive research and all that kind of stuff that Bigfoot is everywhere, and Bigfoot is just a demon, like everything else. And then, by the way, you can capture these demons quite easily with your cell phone. All you have to do is just right. start taking pictures of things all around you instead of people, and you'll find. Them. So, anyways, the, mm -hmm. my my whole thing about this is uh, the true enemy, and the true enemy is because the, the Bible tells us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and etc. Blah blah blah. And so, uh, yeah, this is true. This is absolutely yeah. true. I absolutely know for a fact. And and after this okay. past year, I'm. Um, this is just physical evidence to support, uh, not only to support the truth, and the it's not even the claim, but the truth that we're wrestling with this demonic realm 
but that things are getting worse. And, you know, one of the dilemmas, um, uh, Katie, that like, you know, with all your research and all that, and my research, you, you learn all about the human infrastructure of the satanic kingdom, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. But you don't, but the, you know, the Satan and his minions have done a great job of hiding themselves. And oh, guess what? The veil's being lifted. And at sure. some point towards this time period, and leading towards the second coming of Christ, there's going to be a point where no man, woman, or child will have an excuse for denying Jesus Christ as some kind of ignorance because these things are going to, they're manifesting everywhere. Because the world religion of witchcraft and sorcery, the Bab- sure. mystery Babylon, is totally in charge. And if you haven't figured it out, Christians are the minority and extreme minority. Absolutely. So, I'm listening to you and just about your testimony. Uh, anyway, let's get into you and your journey. Well, I, this is what mm-hmm. I want to do, okay? Because everybody knows about me. and Not everybody does, but the people that follow my YouTube channel, <laughs> they, they know a little bit about me. So, anyways... And someday I'll share my testimony. Um, I mean, you know, bits and pieces. I share what my, going through my journey. But uh, who were you in, as a child in the beginning? Because, you know, it's this whole journey. Uh, the reason I'm asking this because it's going to build up to this crescendo when you had the life <laughs> crisis that we all have. And when you think you're going crazy and you, you know... Should you be in a mental ward or whatever? And this is, you know, God was finally starting to work on you and wake you up from yeah. the, the stupor that you've been in your whole life. So let's start with your childhood. Uh, who is Katie? And I mean, what, what was your background like that caused you basically, and I say this in all respect because I'm that person too, and so many mm-hmm. of us are. Katie, the early uh, girl, the childhood, the lost soul, the beginning of this quest to find yourself, in quotes. And it's really what you're looking for was God all along, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, um, I'll be 40 this year. Um, just sort of set context. Um, grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, broken, broken family. Um, father left when I was three. I went to a Church of England primary school, which was really rather idyllic, actually. Um, we sang the hymns, um, didn't know what they meant. There was no sort of inter- like teaching, if you know what I mean. It was just kind of more ritual, traditions of men. Um, I think we had daily prayer and things like that. And there was a beautiful old church, you know, 1600 church that would go and have services and things like that. Um, and I did go to a Baptist church and an office with my mother till I was about 11. But I couldn't have told you what the gospel was. You see, that, that's kind of religion for you. Um, but I do remember trying to attempt to read a New Testament, no, it was an absolute pocket Bible with the old New Testament in it. And I tried seven times to, to read Genesis, but the old language of the King James, I just, it was a stumbling block for me. And I remember I couldn't get past the first few chapters. Right. Um, but I do, God brought back to me a memory that I had after I got saved, um, of me being about four or five. And I did have a childlike faith, which I find quite fascinating, even though, I didn't know the gospel. I, I did have a concept of heaven and hell because I'd stolen some sweets from the sweet shop and I remember being put back in the car and I said, stop the car. Mum, um, I've stolen some sweets when I go to hell. And I remember asking her that and it's a very vivid memory. And I can't remember what the outcome of what I did after that. It was just a very slither of a memory. It's bizarre. So I remember did, I did... I did used to think those sort of questions, and God puts us to turn it in our hearts and us to think about God and question why we're here. And I do remember having those thoughts as a very young child. And when you realise, you know, your parents are going to die and you start questioning all those things, I'd cry myself to sleep with my parents dying, and you realise about death and all those kind of things. Um, but then what, take, what, what took over is secondary school, which you go to when you're the age of 11, and then, you know, pseudoscience and all the rest of the evolution, everything takes over. Um, the infiltration of the world, movies, and all the entertainment is is to is ruled by the prince and power of the air, Satan and his minions and his worldly puppets that control all media, education, um, even adverts and campaigns and everything. Literally, it's all being contaminated. And so, you know, we're indoctrinated by TV shows like Ghost Hunter or um, 
you know, all the different world religions. So that's hiding the light of the gospel. Um, so I just thought, well, it's a bit of a small discord. It could be this, it could be that, it could be reincarnation. You know, I didn't really give it much more thought as an adult, to be honest. Um, I just thought, well, I'll find out when you die. I didn't know you could know this side of eternity. I mean, everything, was, all my thinking was back to front. So um, I've got a real new worldview now. So what happened? Um, so through school, yeah, I just um, I had very low self-esteem, like most of my life, really. Um, and then sort of teenage years became, started drinking, taking recreational drugs, promiscuity, all that kind of thing. And, um, you know, I was very studious, but I did work hard and play hard. And, um, but yeah, my poor, long-suffering mother. The no, English way. Old child. The, huh? English, the English way. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, you know, the work hard and play hard and, uh, and uh, be very studious. You know, it's interesting. Here's something, This before we go any further, just just way off the topic, but I have to, to ask you this question because, yeah. because you have this, uh, as we go on, we're going to, you know, your uh, conspiracy background as I have, if they like to call it, which is really the truth. Yeah. Um, who won the Revolutionary War? The American, Re the American Revolutionary the American War. Who won that? <laughs> um, you're going to make me look really dumb now. Um, um, the Revolutionary War. Oh my gosh. I don't know much, too much about I know about the origin of American history, but not. Okay, well, that's interesting. The next question then is, is, <laughs> is, is, is America... I went to a conference school. Is America, is, is America still a British colony? Well, some say it's a corporation, but also you got, like, um, no. Yes, it is. Well, some people would say let me, it's financial. Let me explain here a few things, okay? This is how deep <laughs> the deception is. You can't trust anything you learn at all. I think, okay, yeah. the Paris, the, pre, the Treaty of Paris of 1783, Trinity, yeah. right, and it was the uh, the uh, the ruling elite, uh, the American colonies came over to Paris, you know, and to talk to the king about the treaty and the outcome of the quote unquote revolutionary war. Who guess who dictated the terms? Oh, just tell me. <laughs> The British King. Right. Now, what does that tell you? If someone dictates the terms of the outcome of a war, isn't it generally that they've won the war? Sure. Well, I think yeah. all the three world wars were planned anyway, reading Albert Pike and all various things like that. But yeah. Sure, sure. But, but I know, I know I'm, and I'm sorry to, to deviate from this, but I feel it's a very important that people hear this only not because it's a history lesson per se, but that the, how deep the deception is that globally, because the tentacles of the Roman Empire are deep. So the only people that want anything as far as on the colony side was the uh, ol oligarchy, the, the ruling aristocracy of sure. uh, of, of America. Most of the uh, people who actually fought against the Brits, when they went back to their farms and the houses, discovered they didn't have a farm or a house. Anyways, the king <clears throat> dictated the terms. And to this day, and this is when you go back to this whole, the three city states that everyone talks about, which is right. Washington, D.C., uh, the yeah. British Crown, right. and then the Vatican, yeah. um, is the fact that America has been and always ha will be an outpost of the Roman Empire that never went away. Yeah. Pontifus Maximus rules fine and well. <laughs> so anyways. Yeah, now UCTV have been doing some good material on that this week. I've been listening to and some I need to finish listening to. But yeah, fascinating stuff. I can yeah. maybe post it. I can post the links in the comment section after that it's kind of relevant to what you're talking about. Yeah. It goes my, so old, deep. my old show, but. Nothing But the Truth. Hmm. Uh, we talked in great detail about that, and that uh, it's just uh, an old thing that's the past for me. So, but you know, I'm more interested in, in what y you, the person, and your spiritual battle to get to the point where God oh, yeah. can wake you up. So you're, you're, really a, you're a teenager in England, and 
I know when I was in England back in that time period, you guys were a little ahead of the game when it came to broken families and people not getting married and all that kind of stuff and just yeah. moving into homes together and all kind of stuff. And by the way, I ended up doing the same thing and all that kind of mm. stuff. And so, um, well, what prompted my the reason my mum went to church and went off was actually it was my late father who died of alcoholism actually when I was 27, but. It was him that spearheaded his spiritual quest for truth, and so she went along for the ride a little bit. Whether she was truly born again, I don't know, because she's certainly in unbelief now, and if anything, believes in universalism. But um, you know, hopefully, I'm going to be a witness to her, and who knows, you know, she may come, she may come back to God. So, but I find it quite interesting that you know, it was when I came to faith, she was like, you're just like your father, because you're just going on that, what the truth, the truth, the truth. But anyway, that's too fast forward. But, um, but yeah, the broken home. Um, it is quite interesting that he spearheaded that anyway. Um, there's another story about my father that I can touch on later, whether he got saved just before he died, but yeah. So, um, so again, yeah, I didn't know the gospel, but um, certainly did have some seeds were planted, you know. Um, and so later on in life, you know, I'd go from like failed relationship to failed relationship. I had sort of um, Anxiety, self, self-esteem issues, which were sort of further exacerbated by a heavy drink and recreational drugs, which is just so prevalent. I mean, druggies and alcohol, alcoholics attract alcoholics. But like, I mean, it's, it's not just, it's, they're just everywhere. And like all my social circles, it, this is what people do. I didn't know any Christians. Um, there's not much for people, young people to do in the UK. They just start going to the pub at the age of about 15, you know, just borrowing my sister's ID, who was older. I get asked for ID. I'm going to nightclubs, going to school the next day. I, very, I can, very, I, by very, the way, very. I can testify to that because I started smoking in England after my mission. I never, yeah, I, you know, I tried a little bit, but actually, actually smoking, and it's been a hard thing ever since the dressing break. That was yeah. quite some years ago, 28 years ago, and um, it's true. There really is nothing else to do. By the way, I used to be by the end before God got a hold of me, I would end up being uh, an alcoholic and being an eight eight guru and. Uh, I did the step yeah. all the way through six times and all that jazz, and so I know exactly where you come from. As more and more you talk, mm. you and I have very similar yeah. experiences. Go ahead. It's just, I would take I would take amphetamines all weekend and barely eat, you know, and then wonder why I was suicidal. Like come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at university or whatever it was at school or in the workplace, it was just horrific. I mean, because I depleted all of my serotonin and stuff. <laughs> Um, some people can handle what you call a come down, but I wasn't too good at handling it. I mean, like, I couldn't even watch the news without blubbing or like, you know, some toppy movie. I would just be like crying to my pillow at night, you know, awful. Um, just didn't have um, a touch of reality really. Just yeah, everything skewed like, on drink and drugs because you're always on a downer. So I didn't help, you know, if someone's already got slight self-esteem issues, um, it's only going to exacerbate that. So it's just horrible really. Um, so then I was married in, I think, 2010 at the age of 30. My math isn't too good. Yeah, at the age of 30. Um, and we were separated 10 months later. So that had a real um, devastating effect. Um, now, did you guys like live this. together prior to that? Yeah, for about five years. So. Of course. Of course. Yeah, non-committal, <laughs> you know. And I'm, I'm always you, the girl. I'm telling you, my sister Katie. So, Sister Katie, I'm telling you, this is all spiritual. This has nothing to do, and I don't. I know I've talked to other folks, and you know, and it all depends on where you're at and your understanding of all those things. But a lot of people do believe in it's psychological and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, there are times when it's a biological uh, things happen. But overall, I would say the the vast majority of all of what you're talking about is spiritual. If you had the spirit of God in you, none of this would have happened. Yeah. I, I know, I know exactly. But you don't um, know that now, but back then, of course, we didn't have that, so we were wandering in a fallen world um, without God, and so you are doing just, what you are sharing <laughs> is so important, and I, what I hope is also after this is that maybe just like uh, Ivani Greppi did, that you come back on my show and, and read your testimony without me interrupting and all that, and we'll do a video, and sure, that will yeah. be the video that I could use and work on doing a slideshow for you. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because then I can, it will be orderly. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there won't be any of my interruptions. But today, I, it's to me that they have the chance to introduce my audience to you, and for me yeah. to get to know you mm -hmm. as well. Uh, oh. so, so this is what this yeah. is about. Yeah, well, hopefully they'll find it interesting. Um, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, I like to say that um, when you have a sense of fear of, of failure, um, and you can become like self-fulfilling prophecy. So, when you're in a relationship, you must push people away because you feel they're just going to reject you anyway. So, it can be like quite self-sabotaging. Um, but we had so many pressures in our marriage. I mean... In a Christian marriage, you wouldn't encounter these issues because you're not conformed to the world. You've come out. You, you're not living like you did. But we, I mean, we were just rebels. We would just have house parties. We were the only people to have a really nice big house. We'd have people around. We were, like, partying in Ibiza, getting high on cocaine and all the rest of it. Like, And he had, not joking, a harem of beautiful female friends, <laughs> which is obviously going to make any woman feel a little bit insecure. Uh, there was just a lot of out, there was a lot of external pressures, but also obviously stuff that was bubbling up inside of me and my insecurity. So it was like gunpowder, really. So um, that wasn't great. And um, just through doing like, drinking drugs every weekend, sometimes on a Sunday night, and we'd be up to three in the morning. I'd have to get up to work in the morning. It was crazy, really, really, really crazy. Um, and actually, when we got married in Ibiza, because he was a DJ there in his early twenties, but. Um, and that's where I saw Bruce Perry, who I'll touch, touch on later, where I ended up getting high with him in one of these kind of beautiful beach beachfront kind of elite, um, I don't know, beautiful places for beautiful people. <laughs> and uh, where he also beautiful people, beautiful people. Hey, you know, I want to touch on this a little bit. Just, uh, and some people will say, "Duh." But not really. I don't think most people have even a clue what it means to be a, a couple that are Christians following a Christian life and what it really means. And one of the things is, because we're, we're a part of the world, and we really couldn't, you can't really bond without the Spirit of God with your husband or wife. You just can't. You can yeah. do it for a while sexually and experience, but as time goes on, that, that wanes and... Uh, it's mm -hmm. not satisfactory. And so when a marriage is truly, and, and there's very few out there at this days. I mean, very few. But those that are truly, and it, it doesn't have to be in, in any, you know, a church, for say, for this to happen. But if you truly are married uh, and sealed by the, you know, under the blood of Jesus Christ, and you stay committed to the Lord, then God it becomes this protective hedge, this bubble for the couple to navigate in this totally wicked and fallen. If you knew how, um, it, it, uh, and I know you're getting real close, uh, Katie, but if you knew how even how even worse it is, and even you know as you peel back the layers and and the spirits realm around you and how evil it is, you realize that you had no chance in hell. Neither one of you guys. So I don't want you to take... Yeah, If, if exactly. there's one thing, you probably already know. I know that. You can't take it personally because the demons, no. the devil wants you to. Because they want to convince um, you that that's your fault. When in reality, you were set up to fail to begin with. Absolutely. I have a different perspective. I would blame myself when he, when he left me. You know, uh, it was horrific. And always placing the blame on me. Self-hatred, self-loathing. When actually it takes you to tango, but also with the worldview and the understanding that I have now through God's word, just to shed light, and I've forgiven myself, but also I, I can also see his sin. Whereas before, I just put him on a pedestal and thought he, you know, I was with me. So I really, really see things in a very, very different light, and I'm grateful for that because I've got healing over that. Although I would still say there's some soul ties there because sometimes I don't think about him in my daily life, but he's in my dreams, and it's always the same sort of dream. So there is. There is something in that which you will become flesh and soul ties. I believe strongly in that because I can wake up from quite some disturbing dreams about that. But yeah, it's always the same kind of repetitive dream. But so it is spiritual. Everything's spiritual. But um, and dreams are very supernatural and spiritual. And that I would ponder on that. But um, very bizarre because I even yeah I'll touch on sleep paralysis in a bit. But and if we want to get back to like my timeline and my testimony, I can. Go back to um, go back to my testimony, yeah. Uh, if you want to, that's fine. 
I mean, <laughs> I know this seems a little strange. It's maybe even even different than what uh, – it's more in the lines of what Jared did, I guess. Uh, just getting to know you as a sister in Christ. I'm excited <laughs> to meet a sister in Christ. You know what I mean? Because there's not, you know, so many out there. And not that, you know, I'm, what I'm saying there is it's just, you know, whenever you, it could be a brother in Christ. Whenever you meet a sibling uh, in, in the Lord, it's like, hey. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's <laughs> it's not going to go the way people think it's going to go. So it's just sure, not. Uh, so why, why force it and turn it into some informal, you know, nonsense? Because that oh, yeah. time will come, like I said. I mean, I'm hoping you come back and. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, wherever, yeah. wherever you feel the the spirit to prompt you to talk, uh-huh. okay, and say, go ahead. Well, so basically, um, I was always into sort of the self help industry. Even though I was with my with my ex husband, I'd read the odd book, you know, overcoming low self esteem. And while we were together early in our relationship, because I used to get anxiety mostly to do with um, my job as an interior designer, a commercial interior designer, which is actually not. When you say you're an interior designer, everyone thinks, oh, come and design my house. But there's so many different specialisms, but, and it's quite technical. So it's not an architect, but you have to know a lot about building rates, planning applications, and technical staff contracts, and project management, and all that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, it wasn't helping that I was doing, you know, drinking drugs all the weekend and then trying to be, be a professional Monday to Friday with all of this kind of like, my, head, my brain was fried. Uh, and severe anxiety attacks was like really bad. I was doing pitch presentations of boredom with people, and, like just trying to wing it. And no preparation, just because I was just literally what playing, working hard, playing hard. So anyway, um, I was seeing a cognitive behavioural therapist at my own personal expense for seventy pounds for an hour and a half for about a period of about ten weeks. Boy, I think um, that helped a lot. <laughs> yeah, but no, I. Some of it, it does make sense, and it's not new agey. It's not like just practical applications. Like if you are you overthinking, you over catastrophizing. You know, because I will jump. My mind will jump to the worst case scenario, and so think. Of, yeah, there is some, there is some good stuff there. But so I've always been like, okay, uh, the positive power, the power of positive thinking. You know, you always have, I'd always have a book like that. You know, on the bedside table, be reading that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I dabbled in all that kind of stuff, and, and and especially when he said about a few, a few months before we left, we started marriage counselling. And um, actually, it's funny when I look back; they're all new ages, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember googling for different people, and then people would you know, be like blog saying it's very important you get the right counsellor. But of course, you know, without God in the picture, um, it's hopeless. So. Um, so he left. We'd always, he'd prepaid actually for ten sessions, and after two, you know, take in. But um, so I, I ended up moving. I was living mm-hmm. in the south coast of England, which is about an hour and a half drive. And um, I could have probably stayed there and made a life down there, but I just, I just knee jerk reaction. I was like, no, I'm just going back to to London, where my mum's from. I haven't got a big family. Most of them live in America or up, up north in Manchester in England. So. Um, I was like, no, I just need to be with my mom, and I ended up moving back into her house, which was meant to be a temporary, temporary solution. And I just had a bit of an emotional meltdown because I was like, I'm such a failure. Like the shame of it, you know. You know, um, people came to my wedding in Ibiza just ten months ago. You know, expense to people. You know, people coming like flying out there and whatnot, and then ten months later we're separated, and we were meant to be like we were like held up as the couple. Do you know what I mean? So. Like just the whole thing was horrific, and um, I was drinking heavily, and I just basically I couldn't fix myself, but I kept looking to the self-help industry. And then for the next few years, I would just dabble in things here and there, holistic therapy. Um, I had a friend that was heavily, she was a non-practicing Catholic Irish uh, Irish stock, but she had been practicing Catholic, I suppose, for her childhood. But she had many weird, different ideas about God and this, that, and other, and very jumbled up and and she was she was kind of there when my marriage broke up and she's like come along to this come along to this reiki i'm going to a reiki sort of intro for people that might want to become a practitioner so i went along to that and she was seeing um spiritualists left right and center every time i spoke to her every week like she's seen someone else because she wanted to know when she's going to when she's going to meet the man of her dreams you know she wanted to know in the future i don't we all but um so I was kind of getting influenced by that as well, and um, I went along to this conference in London, which is I think it's over a period of about a week, 
with mind, body, and spirit. And um, at about the same time, I also met an old friend from Southampton who used to be a bit of a uh, small-time drug dealer, but alongside her normal day job and just a bit of a nutcase. But um, she seemed to have sorted her life out, and she was now talking about shamanism, and she was studying to be a shaman and all these kind of other practices. And she dressed differently, and she looked like she was wearing harem pants and feather earrings and... She just seemed to be talking about peace and joy, and of course that's what I was looking for in my life. I was quite disturbed and not at peace, you know, because I was still just going out and just trying to get male attention and partying to make myself feel better, you know. I'm looking in all the wrong places because um, it just makes you feel ten times worse. The shame, you know, get, having memory blackouts and just going on a drinking session and just ending up at and random people's houses and just like the next day it's like who oh, are other people I mean it's crazy <laughs> so I was kind of like trying to find some some way to fix myself obviously you can't do it in your own strength so um, I went along to this mind body spirit festival and I ended up doing a workshop there just on a whim and it turned out to be actually um, one of the founding members of a 90s electronic dance music band called Faceless, yeah, and one of their hit songs was God is a DJ, um, which is promotes idolatry, but also other, other songs that will work. And it's very occultish, because they, the whole um, dualistic black and white and the symbolism they use is pyramids and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so now he is actually a social change agent on the spiritual side, and he'll do festivals, and he'll often be seen at festivals where David Icke is as well. Mm, um, yeah, and this guy, I remember I did this this, uh, this four hour, whatever it was, um, um, workshop, and uh, and it was bizarre really, he was making a stick on plasters or notes on our heads saying Hitler or who do you identify with and stuff, I can't really remember much about that, but I do remember part of it was making us look into the eyes of the person that sat next to us for about five minutes, now that is really intense, and we just, I just, you can't help it get emotional because you're staring into someone's soul and that can be so much more said than, than words and anyway we both had tears streaming down our eyes anyway <laughs> and so it was all very interesting but it didn't fix me it didn't help me much. and that night I was in the pub and then went to random ordered some cocaine got high then met some other people went back to theirs and they were like into like Reiki and angels and they were really weird and <laughs> end up staying up talking to them and they were like 10 years younger than me at the time and just chatting rubbish and then um, and they just crash on the sofa and I think it was a Sunday night and I'd work the next day <sighs> there we were and I just rang in sick and it was just horrific you know just off the rails completely um, just crazy so there's no healing in these places because there's no conviction there's no concept of sin or anything like that so um so this kind of went on for a little while, and then a friend that I just I met now, she she's actually gone from just being a regular um, girl with normal sin in her life, like to being now like a practitioner of shamanism, and she does all these festivals, like Burning Man and stuff like that. And so she's actually become a lesbian, and um, through the process of like going into the New Age, and like, I sort of looked at Facebook and talked to her now. Imagine that. <laughs> A Romans Romans chapter one. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, because she was heterosexual. Now I've seen her wedding is on YouTube and it looks amazing. Like the whole spectacle of it and the new age and the way they put on a great performance and everything's all feathers and fluff and I you know glittery face paint and just looks beautiful and on the beach and you know it looks amazing but obviously it's. Well, it's you know. It's so common what you're saying there when it comes to the New Age. Because, first of all, the, as you progress in the New Age, you become so demonized or so demon-possessed yeah. that you, your, your whole reality is so distorted. And I know the spiritual advisor that I had while I was in the Unity Church, uh, he eventually, a couple of years later, is like, hey, I, I, you know, come over to my house and I'm like, we're going to have a party and all that. And... He says, well, i got to tell you something. I'm, I'm gay. And I'm like, well, okay, I figured that. And, and uh, <laughs> he shows me his girlfriend, his boyfriend, girlfriend thing guy. And this, uh -huh. guy is, this guy, he's like, all these, like, friends are all witches, literally, you know, witches. And um, 
he's got like breast implants, the pec implants, and all this stuff, and I just like dressing around like you know half naked and all that and feminine and I'm like yeah. And it's true, you know. The thing is, the more and more you go down this road, this of uh, the new age, it's all designed specifically to demon possess you. I was so demon yeah. possessed by the time God got a hold of me. Oh my gosh! And witchcraft and shamanism. Oh and, yeah. Oh my gosh! Wait, I, was, yeah. I was so stupid too. You know, I had no idea. And most people are so st- we're so stupid and naive about what's really going on. And this shamanism stuff all sounds really great, but I tell you one thing: I, to this day, ever since I started the the, the uh, spiritual warfare that God put me, you know, is now putting me through, is uh, allowing me to go through. Um, shamanism is a big part of it, the attacks, and yeah. anyways, I can go into detail on that someday myself. But anyways, my point yeah. here in all this is what you're saying is true. <laughs> it's, this is yeah. not this. It is not the exception; is the absolute norm of what happens to a person. You got a friend that was yeah. a beautiful woman, it, it, it been married, and you know, uh, having a semblance of normal life, and now they've turned her Jeez. into a witch. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what it so, is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she was going to be one of my bridesmaids, but we'd fallen out. She didn't, and then we reconnected, and she seemed she she had this dramatic change, and I was like, wow. She, but she was putting on Facebook, no, no, you in capitals are amazing. Yeah, it's all about you and loving oneself, self acceptance, all that kind of, you know, feel good stuff. There's no concept of sin, it's about, you know, your divinity and you're amazing and ascended masters and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, even now, like, Facebook talked to her and found her on social media and, you know, her posts because she does self promote herself at these different events and it's like a dolphin, she's got a dolphin spirit or something on I mean. When you know the truth, it's laughable, right? I mean, it's awful. But I see this even, because I used to sign um, bespoke greeting cards as a sideline as well, which I had to repent of because they were like pretty grotty adult greeting cards and just the sentiments weren't really um, great. But um, I've seen even, and I still like notice things like this in people's greeting cards, even the new age people trying to the greeting card movies, because I saw it on someone's desk at work in a job pre previously and um it's that some dolphin spirit or something I thought, oh my gosh, it's just insidious it's just everywhere. <laughs> like just oh we just live in such a crazy world. But um so anyway, um so I I reconnected with her and this was probably yeah, early twenty thirteen. Uh, and I've been to the Mind Body Spirit Festival and within the same few weeks I dealt with her and she said, look, I'm, I'm doing this raw cacao chocolate dance ceremony. Um, it's got to have, it has potent healing properties of power. Or I'm not quite sure what in memory. Um, I was like, oh, okay, I'll come along. Because I'm just, I was up for trying them. You know, nothing I wouldn't try. I'd give anything a go once, you know, colonics, whatever it was, you know. But well, I'd tick that box. I was like, yeah, I'm up for that. So I went along and yeah, she was dressed in all her regalia and then she'd hired a, a hall in London and uh, as you entered it was very ceremonial and she had this feather which she'd sort of waft down your body and blow into your face and then you sat in a circle with all these nice like this ground up cocoa bean or whatever so we all sit on that and then sort of Terry and Sherman sort of said about what our hurts and hang ups were you know um, like a counselling session and then we danced around for two hours just the music with no alcohol or anything, which I just found extremely painful. Um, and I'll, cause I'm quite a self-conscious person anyway. So, um, but I did that and just thought, right, okay, well, that's fine. No change here though. I mean, great. We went out for dinner that night. It was her birthday uh, that week or something. And then, so some of the people that have been to the event who are like full-blown New Agers, they came along. So that's seven or eight of us, I think. And I just was out on a limb because. I didn't really know what they were talking about, and they were talking about astrology charts, which they were getting out, and like wooing and wowing over these astrology charts, and talking about this practitioner and that practitioner, and I was like, oh, okay, and then they got into the subject of being attacked by entities. Um, they wouldn't have a frame of reference like demons, I don't think, because like, they don't in the New Age, but um, they don't have a physical worldview, and. Um, I was just like, wow, listening to it all, because I was obviously getting sleep paralysis anyway, I'd had it since childhood, but uh, later on the attacks ramped up even more after this event, but I'll get into that. Um, 
And one guy in particular was saying, yeah, when, when, when I go to bed at night, uh, or every night, I get these visitations by these like, entities. And I think it's very hard to explain the spiritual thing. So you can explain it too well, because I know how hard it is to even explain and articulate a dream that I've had, which can be so vivid, but how do you can articulate it? It's so surreal, so things morph into other things that you always can't explain it, but um, if you do an actual replay from your brain, it'd be great. But, so he was just saying he'd get these night visitations and they were just watching him. And that's where we hear the phrase, the watchers, don't we? But anyway... And he was, and then the others were like, you just need to like say love and light, and you know, this is how you can of evil spirits, you know, burn some sage, is it sage leaves or something, and stuff like that. Um, what's it called? Um, smudging and stuff like that. So, I just thought it was all very interesting, and um, yeah, a few months later, I, I was a believer in Christ. <laughs> it was bizarre. So, um, so they were recommending transcendental meditation and things like that. So I went onto internet and downloaded an app on my phone. And actually it was Deepak Chopra and Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey and Eckhart Tolle and all the rest of it, you know. They were kind of just all working for Satan. <laughs> um, because we're told to meditate on the word of God, not empty your mind, so that um, these other entities can inject thoughts and things. And I was looking at automatic writing. I was looking into things like spirit science. And um, I was just in, I was, I, until last October, I've been a temp, I've been freelancing for six years since my breakup of my marriage, I've been unstable, I've had so many horrific, abusive um, relationships at work with, when you're a personal assistant, because I left my career in the insurance line, I've had so many abusive um, employers, I've not even wanted to go full time, I've just gone from temp job to temp job, so you could be somewhere for a six month maternity contract, or you could be somewhere for two weeks, somewhere for six weeks, and I kind of just enjoyed that because I thought, well, I've only got to work with that person for six months or something. Because honestly, people are so sinful, so wretched in the workplace, there's bullying, there's all this kind of stuff going on. So anyway, I was, I'd go from like job to job, and um, I was living at my mum's, so my rent was low, and my outgoing was just like a phone bill, you know, I didn't have any responsibilities, so I could afford to kind of do it. Anyway, so <laughs> I... Um, I remember now, I, that was it, my sister from the Flor from Florida was over, and um, that's the last time I saw her, was in July 2013, and um, she's actually coming over here in a few weeks' time, but um, my rabbit hole experience, yeah, I, um, I'd taken this job that could potentially earn, like, it was £30,000 a year, basic, but with a projected sales income of 90000 so I was like, right, I need a lifestyle where I can live on my own, have a lifestyle, because living in London is ridiculously expensive, and I just thought, you can just self-deceive yourself, can't you? Yeah, I can do this job, eight hours on the phone a day, posh telly sales. And, um, you know, I actually just speculatively wrote to the company, because I was very bullshy, and I self promote stuff, and just two or three interviews, speaking to the ND, like, yeah, I can do this for your company, da 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 Anyway, I ended up in this job, I really didn't want <laughs> Uh, they put me on sales training, everything, and it was like ringing up a list of 100 companies trying to get big into um, decision makers to sell basically interior design to one your company. Uh, it was horrific. I mean, it was like high pressure. Anyway, I was drinking heavily and I was hungover after like a family do in mum's back garden, and I think we were smoking weed as well. And um, I woke up Monday morning and I was like, I feel terrible. There's no way I want to go back to this job. I've been there six weeks. It's really hard to get an appointment. Coupled with that, they've asked me that, um, to work from home for the next two weeks, They're calling all like Silicon Valley and to work different hours because the time difference. And the MD of the company has already got his flight, so you just need to get him booked in with all these different CEO companies. And I literally, like, the life drained out of my face. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I rang in sick, okay, and I was like, I just basically, well, no, I didn't even mean sick, I just said I'm not coming back, which I've never done that. That's not like me, but I was just like, I can't do this anymore. It's fine, I'll get another temp job. And um, so I was feeling pretty bad, thinking, oh, Mom, I went down into the kitchen and said, like, Mom, I'll just jack my job in. Um, don't worry, I get a temp job just like that. Because I can. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with various agencies. But that was a permanent job that I jacked in, by the way. But um, I would mostly be just a freelancer. So anyway, um, I went up to my room. I was like, this is bad. I just feel terrible. I need to like, make myself feel better. So 
I don't know, I was going to try and get a meditation video or something. So I was looking on YouTube on my laptop in bed and then somehow I just went down the road hole and for six weeks straight I then came to knowledge of Christ. And um, basically just now the nature of YouTube, you've got all the stuff, videos on the right hand side, I somehow went down the rabbit hole with David Icke and then all that stuff. Like um, in the space of six weeks I was like putting in 18 hour days with like very little sleep. Um, because once you uncover a few truths, you want to understand the big picture. And like everything I thought I'd been taught in, in life is a lie. You know all these Hollywood um, Satanist videos on unmasking the Illuminati, um, Federal Reserve Bank, Bilderberg, the Rothschilds, Federal, the whole lot, they're all insulated, you know, alien abductions, everything. I'm looking to everything. Because one thing will just trip up onto the next thing. And um, like I was so alarmed. I mean, I was freaking out and freak out mode and um, chemtrails, everything, fluoridation of water, you name it, I researched it and they were all insulated and I it was all jumped up though because there's fake disinformation out there, right? So I was on good channels, bad channels, I, I had no discernment, right? So, um, and I'd point to the sky and look, go, Mum, look at these chemtrails and she'd be looking at me like, do I need to get the white coat out, you know, do we need to fly? <laughs> put you in a mental home, so it was really, really bad. <laughs> I was like hyper alert, like, oh gosh. And then I remember just looking through the guy that I'd become friends with through Facebook, that Illuminati chap who, who I'd done his workshop months before, and I'd, I was observing him for like the next six months and just seeing things that he was posing as a, a, a Messiah figure, he was mocking the cross of Christ, he was putting his hand over the one eye symbolism, and I, was, I started to join a lot of dots. I mean, I hadn't even come across all the good ministries that I now follow. You know, I know I was getting a lot of disinformation as well, like David Icke. And because I had no... I realised the world was Antichrist, but I didn't know what the Gospel was. I just knew there was a Luciferian agenda. Um, but also, I was jumbled up looking at David Icke, who, the same we had these reptilian overlords and stuff, so I had no hope, and I actually felt suicidal because I was like stuck and frozen in fear of the new world order, but I didn't have the biblical foundation because there is so much disinformation out there, it's, it's shocking. Um, I actually wanted to take my life. I remember thinking, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go back to work at some point, you know, I can't just live in my room for six weeks, you know, my mum's looking at me strange. Um, I'm not eating, I'm just in my room speaking to YouTube and sending her links by email, Go okay, watch this, watch this, you know, and doing my mother's head in, um, and other people that were in my life at the time, I was just sending them like loads of web links, hey, watch this, watch this, um, and it was all very jumbled up, but during that time I did come across um, a ministry called, um, by Chris White, uh, Sleep Promise, I have to stop it, so... I was getting, because I've been looking into UFOs and things like that, but I was trying to get to the bottom of what they are and aliens and demons and all that sort of stuff. Um, it did say, like, calling them the name of Jesus, you could rebuke these demons. So I, I was getting it like five, six times a night. They would come at me, even if I tried to snooze in the afternoon because I'd stay up all night watching videos, they'd attack me in the day as well. I'd hear my name being called out. It's only happened twice. Once when I was in the kitchen with my mum and stepdad, they were like, Katie. Um, it's like, you can hear it in your head, so I imagine what schizophrenic must be like, because I've only had it a few times, and it's bizarre. Uh, you know, you're being watched, you're getting attacked, and I was trying to tell my mum I'm being attacked by demons at night. Like, they would sit on the edge of my bed, causing my body to roll in towards them. Um, even like it would they'd mock being like a cat, you know how a cat jumps into your bed and makes itself comfortable? I would feel like that. They were just all kinds of things, like psychological warfare. Um, then sometimes during an attack they put claws, like you have pressure points in your back. If someone digs you or puts a pressure point, it kind of makes your uh, your back arch. They, were, they know how to use your pressure points, which if you know about incubus and succubus demons, they obviously know pressure points because people say they have the best in the obviously. <laughs> um, it was more than with an actual human being. So they know your trigger points and they're literally it's horrific. And then, you know, trying to live a function as a normal person the next day having had no sleep, but I was just terrific. But anyway, I was kind of rebuking the name of Jesus, but obviously I wasn't born again and didn't have the authority, but then, I mean, I think it was by God's grace, really, I got a phone call after about six weeks, 
when I, you know, was going down and doing this research that um, that said, oh, somebody, uh, it, was a, it was a guy that I'd been seeing on and off for a few years, um, and his client needed somebody to work with her. She was in celebrity management and film premieres and stuff in central London, and this one was definitely a witch, but anyway. Um, so I went to work with her for two months, and it kind of took the edge off because I was just back in work, and I, I could only do my research during the evening, but I was back in a routine and some sort of normality, even though I was on hyper alert, you know, I'd see all these symbols and things on TV, and I got rid of my TV, and stuff. I threw that out, so I realised that everything was compromised and controlled, so I've seen videos showing that all major news anchors were just repeating off the same stuff, and I could see the deception, but um, I didn't have the light of Christ really in me at this point, but I did have some knowledge, you know? So anyway, that was a bit of a car crash a few months, and I remember just drinking heavily to sort of drown my sorrows, really. Um, because of what I, what I, the revelation that no one believed me. So the few friends that I'd had sent me back to London at night because, yeah, I just kind of distanced myself from them because all they wanted to talk about was, oh, look at Madonna's latest performance on TV or just stuff that I knew that was a deception. So I kind of was just very aloof at this point and I'd go home and do my research. And um, that went on for a little while. Um, and then I just couldn't really move forward in my life because I felt stuck and frozen by fear of the new world order. Um, and no one believed me about anything, so I just thought, well, what's the point of starting a career? Or I was quite an entrepreneur, I had quite an entrepreneurial spirit, where I'd been working on this business plan in early 2013 um, to start this online greeting card company. Like, I don't even know Moon Pig or Bunch of Pigeon, but they take a tick off on a, big, on a big way, but it's like personalised greeting cards where you um, personalise them in the sense of dispatch to print on demand. I've worked for months and months, actually years in the making on this business plan. But, um, so I just thought, oh, what's the point? Um, so I was you know, just meandering for a couple of months and then I carried on my research, I was trying to join the dots until I got to the end of it. I mean, there was like salmon swimming against the stream. I was just, I got to understand the whole big picture, like what is going on here, all the deceptions. Um, uh, but obviously I hadn't cracked open the Bible at this point. Um, I was just still glued to YouTube. So the next thing that kind of was a, a revelation was, um, well, no, actually, I was still tuning into David Icke, bizarrely, yeah, because, I mean, now I can't believe that the two were in parallel, like, believe in Jesus, but also David Icke, if you don't have the word of God, you know, you're going to be deceived, you know? So I was still looking at David Icke, and um, I was so frozen, I thought, right, I, I'm, I'm going to go and see him in Wembley Stadium or whatever, or whatever it was, so I booked a ticket. Um, and I also re recalled the new ages that I've met, and also when I've been in Ibiza, maybe in 2008, 2009, um, getting high with him, he was like a recreational drug user, but also he'd been in TV documentaries, because I met him there, and I was like, oh, you've been in this documentary, and he's getting high, and spending an afternoon, definitely getting high with this guy that I'd seen on TV, who had been on two series called Amazon and The Tribe, and both documenting him going native with indigenous tribes and doing all their rituals and customs. And one of that, one of those in, included ayahuasca. And that included, you know, um, that was on the BBC in England. And you just trust it's a good thing because it looks like a cathartic experience. People have healing and, and healing of hurts and hang-ups. And it's almost, they talk about regression or you'll have shared visions, group um you are have a meeting with Christ consciousness and with the creator and the impartation of just feeling loved and accepted and um, I've only had like good reports of it so I just trusted it was a good thing um, I'd also watched a very very well known documentary with DMT the spirit molecule um, previously which again people's testimonies was just you know in the new age movement and just the secular world it's, it's done the rounds, you know, like a lot of people know that in documentary. So I, I was researching that, thinking I was going to get my healing from there. Um, and, I, and I was putting a lot of time in researching this, testimony after testimony, you know. And um, just promised, like, that was going to fix me. That was going to give me the answers, you know, that I was looking for. I thought maybe I was just going to get a vision that everything was fly into place and I would just have clarity and healing and I could move forward in my life. So, um, the more I researched it, um, I was like, yeah, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the Amazon, I'm going to go to, um, 
going to go and have this experience and book into a two-week, maybe 10-day, I think it was, uh, they call it healing retreat, and you do ayahuasca every other day, and it's about a four-hour trip each time, and then you have a day to recover. And, you know, it's very, they don't, they do warn you, it can be horrific, you have like a handler that handles you because, you, you know, your knees might buckle, you might be seriously vomiting, but then... I was a veteran drug user. I'd taken an ethyl and double dropped and, and had that same experience in the toilet cubicle and the nightclub and then come out going, yeah, you let's go and dance on the stage. So I've had that, like, yeah, you've got to go through the pain to have, like, I've been there, I've been to the depths of this, like, property. So um, I was like, yeah, I can handle that. And it's the worst payoff, the, 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 the worst, the worst uh, effect, you better the payoff or something, you know, the more revelation you're going to get, all the kind of stuff. Um, I didn't know it was a deception at that point, um, but as time went on, and I was also researching Christ a little bit and by YouTube, albeit, and um, there were some Christian ministries that I'd come across, and it started to dawn on me, um, I, I didn't want it to, because I'd, I'd booked my retreat and my flights and everything to the Amazon and to go to Peru and um, do Machu Picchu and go there for a month and everything. Then it dawned on me, people kept talking and it kept surfacing in various testimonies of them seeing, encountering a serpent. Now, in the space of about a week, all the like pennies dropped um, and I couldn't deny it any longer. And um, one, one testimony was called Ayahuasca, My Trip into Hell. And it said he'd encountered a serpent in his, in his uh, vision. And he was, you know, raised Christian, but obviously wasn't following the Lord at the time. And, God miraculously delivered him. Um, he saw a cross. And he, he wanted to kill himself in this moment of just, he'd lost his mind. And that really triggered, along with some other things, the people's testimonies about the serpent. And obviously I've seen sort of YouTube videos about the end times and the dragon and all the rest of it and the serpent. And it just literally triggered. I just couldn't believe it. I, oh, that was it. Laura Maxwell, in the space of a week, I saw Laura Maxwell's testimony that um, angels, no, demons composed of dead relatives, ascended masters, aliens, etc. And that they, Satan composed an angel of light. And that um, they're a deceiving spirit. So literally, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I felt, I was almost shaking out that I, I realised I'd been tricked. So I, and I was getting severe sleep paralysis, right? You know, nothing was working. And so I was sort of bringing this on myself. So I, I found this childhood Bible at my mum and um, I basically like clutched it to my chest one night and it was about midnight and I said, God, because like, I wanted the demons to hear as well. So I said out loud, God, I've been tricked. I decided to follow you now and I'll find out everything else about Christ. Um, I didn't even have a frame of reference to say, like, forgive me or anything like that. I didn't know how to pray. But this shadow entity I saw out the corner of my eye that sort of fleeting and go out the window and... And then from that night, I'd sleep with a Bible in my bed and listening to all kinds of, like, crazy music and stuff like that, like, thinking that would ward off evil spirits and stuff. But, you know, that was, like, a major revelation. And I thought, I can't believe I've just invested a couple of thousand pounds or whatever to go to a place steeped in witchcraft. So I was kind of, like, devastated. <laughs> so the next day at work, um, I was just like, wow, I guess I'm a Christian now. You don't, you're not born again, but you just think, wow, right, like, I... This is a choice I need to now. I need to get serious and find out everything there is about Christ because I've been deceived. I need to really meet other Christians, yeah? Because before it had just been me looking on the internet. So I remember I kind of just stood up in a daze at work and looked around and of all people I went over to an Hindu. <laughs> and I went, I think I'm a Christian. <laughs> and this was in like May 2014, I think. And he's like, oh, I know a Christian. Um, but he's actually a Catholic, and um, put me up with him. He said he only works around the corner, so I met him for a few lunch times and had some questions and tried to answer them. And then he said, look, come to my Catholic church one evening. And I did. And then uh, he tried to minister to me the sinner's prayer and everything, but he's quite a mystic. But I didn't know that at the time, and he laid hands on me, spoke in tongues, um, and he was just saying, when you say the sinner's prayer, um, or shut your eyes and pray, you might see a cross, you might see a this, and... And then later on, when we went out for dinner, he said he used to levitate out of bed and stuff. So he's just demonic, you know. I, I, a few months after that, I realised that these things are demonic manifestations. So crazy, that all was. <laughs> um, 
But what I did do was make sure that after 24 hours, because I thought, well, look, I'm going to still go to Peru and I, I need a break away. I need to get off internet. I need to just go into God's creation and just have a break. I was paid for the flights. I'm just not going to that healing centre. They actually refunded my deposit. And then um, I just did other cool things while I was there, like the you know, eco-tourism place, and the piranha fishing, and the simple wildlife and stuff like that. So it, was all, it worked out all worked out well. Um, and when I was there, I was witnessing to ayahuasca pilgrims who would gather on the um, promenade of this kind of colonial place where the rubber boom was. And um, ironically, there was deceased Christians there, and they'd be like throwing up the cross hand signs to me, saying, "Oh no, don't come! You're, you know, you're trying to put us off doing this." It's like it's deception, you know. And um, I kind of got a name for myself. They're like, "Oh, don't talk to her. She'll try and put you off it." You know, cause people come in droves to do these go on these ayahuasca pilgrim um, vision quests. So. I kind of bided my time, and then, uh, but, but what I basically uh, decided that I'd be in the land of Israel 24 hours after I landed back in Israel. But while I was trying to witness to these ayahuasca pilgrims, um, so I'm just going to take a to give my drink. Um, what happened is um, they were still telling me about these amazing experiences that they would had, and that pull was still on me to take it. And even though I know it was a deception. You know, they made it sound so awesome, you know, and um, it was still pulling on my heartstrings, like, oh, well, I, could, I know it's a deception, but I could still do it, maybe I'll get some enlightenment, you know. Um, and it was battle, because there was an opportunity, I could have gone and done a three-day, you know, trip or whatever. So, but I did it, and um, I just hang out with these people. And there's, like, three major gringo shamans, and they're not indigenous shamans, but that's how Satan works, and we get people going over there on a vision quest and then he'll draw people from the western world and then it's kind of now you know it's reached into the west it's become like mainstream um so i talked to these main mainstream figures but uh and i've tried to witness them by email but um didn't get a response you know about it's a deception etc so i'd already pre-booked it to machu picchu for the second part of my trip um because if i was going to fly out there for just a vision quest i was like if i'm going to visit a country i'd like to just see more than just one area you're going to fly halfway across the world so um i remember flying from uh Iquitos to cusco because i was going to join this trek and um i got off the plane got on a cab and it was coming off the, off the motorway and like through the coastal coastal roads just like along the coast and um I know God must have set this up because I was feeling so sad like I'd missed my opportunity for enlightenment and healing you know I'd been investing for months and that was putting my hope in this healing which now the opportunity had passed and I definitely you know wasn't going to do it and this song came on playing in the cab um called All By Myself if you know it and it's kind of like all by myself never want to be <laughs> oh, it's kind of like you know kind of hot it's a kind of sad song so I was listening to that feeling very sorry for myself and feeling very by myself and um as we just went literally came off the motorway into the coastal road I could see across the bay it was, I'm not joking like a 60 foot cross brightly lit it was like a massive beacon it's all you could see there was no like skyline it was just the cross and it was like God then just spoke to me you know no turning back I will never leave you thank you and it was then I could just move on with my life because it being the temptation had still been so strong to take the ayahuasca it really really was um so that was that was pretty amazing and um when I did get to Machu Picchu finally after a four day track something um there were some pagans there you know like worshipping this monument and stuff but I just sort of separated from the group and just found somewhere quiet to, to speak to God in my spirit you know and I had you know the word of God on my, on my Kindle, and I just sat there and I just said to God, you know, this is a new beginning, and I sort of lifted my soul to Him, and I was like, there's no turning back. I'm beginning to see, you know, from your eyes now, and how this all works. And, you, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, and how all the whole Babylonian everything comes back from Samaria and all the rest of it. And I was just trying to get a big picture, and it was a real turning point, really, and um, it was pretty pretty amazing. So then, um, literally, I flew back. UK and then 24 hours later I was in, in Israel on a tour of the Holy Land and uh, that was that was pretty amazing and um, yeah there's just so much to my testimony but um, 
yeah, a totally different worldview. And I didn't really know much of the Bible when I was in as well, but I was, I was watching a lot of what I call fear porn on YouTube. To that point, we were listening to this information. I thought the end of the world was going to happen, you know, 2014. Um, but now I go to a lot of Bible prophecy teachings, and I have a lot of the Word of God in me now to understand that God has a timeline. And all of this stuff is ordained by God. So when I realized that, I can kind of take a step back and breathe. Um, whereas before I was in fear of the New World Order, and now I have just a healthy fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, right? And um, that God has all this, all this is in God's hands and in His plan. So um, I don't now fear the enemy, but I, have, I think it's important to know your enemy. But I don't fear the enemy, and now I just fear God, who can, you know, the keeper of my soul and spirit. So, yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride, but. Um, just realising that everything in this world is a lie and deception, and deception upon deception of psychological operations has been major revelation. And um, but now I'm kind of I'm resting on, on God's promises. So. Um, but I guess it was a breach first because I considered it comes to faith, you know, looking for forgiveness of sins. That kind of came later. I came to knowledge of the truth, who God is, the world's antichrist, not anti Buddha, Muhammad, or anything. The world is antichrist, the spirit of antichrist is in the world, the children of obedience, and um, came to acknowledge that Christ is the truth, um, and had to surrender really, because he has the key to eternal life, so where else would I, would I go, and, uh, and then once I was born again, and realised Christ died for my sins, etc., mm-hmm. then the Holy Spirit started to reveal to me the condition of my own heart, and the heart of mankind, and then did a work on me, you know, so it's been kind of back to front of it. It's been, a, it's been a bittersweet, painful journey, I guess, because to see the condition of your own thoughts and intents in your heart, quite difficult. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know the depth of depravity of mankind, you know. So, um, yeah, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. I'm just listening to you. I think it still feels a lot off now. <laughs> no, it's letting you share what you wanted to share. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the lyrics of All By Myself. I mean, what a depressing song. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Talk about sorcery and witchcraft. Woo-hoo. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah how, is, how is he transferring your life? Like, you were talking about drugs and alcohol. Is that out of your life yet? Or is that, do uh, you mind me asking that question? I guess the first thing I should ask, but it's usually a, one of those things, because, you know, when you're talking, it's such a heavily part of your life. Yeah. Has, has God helped you to be to at least control it? Uh, yeah, I mean, some some sins went straight away, like overnight. Like I had a potty mouth, I would swear, you know, curse all the time and just use swear words to interject into sentences, you know. Um, a lot of people do that, especially where I work now. I work with every other word, the swear word, or we use Christ's name in vain. But, um, you know, so that went supernaturally. Um, there were several other things, like I did. I'm honest, I would habitually watch porn and things like that. And literally, I had quite a supernatural deliverance from that because when I was coming to faith, I saw like a video that said um, something for Satan, and literally, I would just shut the laptop down and never look. I never had temptation to look at that ever again. You know, so like, I was a bit of a, a geezer bird. <laughs> I suppose a flaky girl. I don't know. I think all the most women that I knew would look at stuff like that. But, um, like, yeah, some things went sleep and actually some things took, took longer, like the alcohol thing um, took longer. The drugs went instantly. Um, so I used to have a terrible, uh, you know, if I had a glass of wine or whatever, my, me and my friends would always want to just get some cocaine. So, yeah, things just dropped off very quickly and other things have been difficult. And then it's not so much the things, you know, it could be like, is it pride or is it envy or like, I'm not saying those are things I struggle with, but... There's other things, more deep rooted issues that the Lord will show you that you need to deal with, you know, um, is it, um, validation from others or whatever, you know, you become very aware of the motives of your own heart and why you're doing things and that's an ongoing journey, you know, and it's a daily thing where you can easily fall back into old things if you're not careful, by if you don't watch and guard your heart and who you spend time with and, you know, there can be a pull from people from my past life that have got to get back in contact with me and things, you know. So you have to watch. I think and the thing, if you follow, if you follow the Lord, that's one thing I've discovered. And what that really means is a prayer life and reading the Bible. 
You don't have to yeah. be a theologian, but you need a prayer life, and you need to read your Bible, and you need to really develop a, a relationship with Jesus and really believe yeah. what he says when he says he's, you know, and he created all things, and he's God, part of the Godhead, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, that, that, that you do need to have, uh, you know, pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in your life. So, anyway, yeah. uh, that what the things happens is a supernatural thing. Is that everyone's just going to walk away from me anyways? That don't want, that aren't interested. All the, which is the vast majority. In fact, in my life, everybody, mm. even those that claim to be Christians, even those in my family, I mean, like nobody. Yeah, I, you know, it's just uh, like you know, Christ said He didn't say He came to bring peace the sword and that he would uh, he wants his followers he's going to get them his elect whether we want to or not and you know you look at somebody like you in your life and how Satan pretty much used you like a piano you know be, be, be it back and forth just waiting for you to crash mm -hmm. but he didn't God didn't allow it to happen he saved us so you know it's uh, and as far you know when you look at all the things, it's like the society is so corrupt from the get-go. And if you're raised by the BBC and from the public school system and all yeah. the other stuff that, you know, uh, everything's hyper-sexualized. And then you put in the alcohol and the drugs and then, you know, we all become a bunch of whores is what we do. It doesn't matter yeah. woman or man. It doesn't matter. It's all about who can the guy get in whose pants? And, you know, and, and it's really <laughs> the great accomplishment in the world, really, is that because most people are never going to uh, ever have the privilege of having, you know, the opportunity to build a skyscraper or a bridge or whatever. You know, most people, this is what the slave class has been given, and whether people yeah. want to accept that or not, we are part of the slave class, whether we like it or not, because we're not in control of making any decisions. Period. No matter what we think. Um, yeah. Um, so, so you yeah. know, you this, that's what it, people that they, they, you know, the devils masterfully created this whole system where basically it comes down to, okay, okay, you get a job, right? In the meantime, also you're uh, exploiting your hormones and all that kind of stuff and everything. Really, it comes down to, and no matter what anybody says, there's a period in your life if you live in this world where. You will just be overtaken by the spirit of loss. Yeah. No matter who you are, I don't care. I mean, you can lie about it all you want, and, but it's the truth. And some people get really bad and end up, you know, I'm going to be talking to uh, David Arnold on Monday, and uh, he, uh, God saved him. Oh, yeah, yeah. He kept me right, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, but you know, he, he was basically a male prostitute and yeah. breast, you know, child uh, prostitute. Yeah, he prostituted himself looking for male affirmation. Yeah, and then and, yeah. you know, he changing his body to breast and all that kind of thing, and thinking of himself to you know to be a woman. Uh, later on today, if it works out, um, you got uh, Jerry Blaze. He's going to come on. He's ex Satanist. And he's saying he experimented with cross-dressing. And, you know, when I look at me in my own, I never got to that point, but I can see that I would have. If God never would have saved me, if he would have just handed me over, I could have seen myself going down that road, you know, doing something horrendous and terrible. <laughs> it was bad enough what I was doing already, yeah, yeah. Like fornicating and committing adultery and, and doing all sorts of vile things with the women I was with. You know what I mean? It was... So, you know, my point bringing all that, and you yeah. the, the drugs and the alcohol in it, and it's all about just getting wasted, as we like to say. Um, and what does that really mean? It's just, you know, you don't want to deal with the pain and the, 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 the insanity, the madness is between your ears. And that's what most people are walking around right now with who do not have Christ in their life. And once Christ comes in your life, things change drastically. Hugely things. And I do believe that the Spirit of God, along with His mighty angels, do protect you. And one of the things it does is He causes the other people in this world and the demons inside them to manifest, and they want nothing to do with you. 
too. Right. And they'll oh, rationalize yeah. all this stuff like I did, you know, yeah. you did in the past. It's, oh, it's just what you believe. That's your belief system. Oh, yeah. Not and knowing he... literally that, you know, as, see, what happened was with you and what happened with me and others is God had to break you down. He had to tear away all the, the lies in your head, all the deception that you believed in, that you trusted yeah. in of uh, this world. So that you finally get to a point and say, oh, my gosh, this place is super, super evil. And either, God, you're real or you're not. And if you're not real, then there ain't no hope at all for any of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know you know what I mean. So, yeah. You know, it's because you talked about it on the road. Listen to the song, All yeah. by Myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to be all by myself. I know. Anymore. A lot of people will come to God in their brokenness. That, you know, because that's how you get your attention. You're looking for healing. So, like, it was a byproduct. Like, I wasn't looking for God. He found me in a way, you know. But obviously, Everyone I was, thinking, I was searching and I was, I was going to get to the bottom of things. Right, because um, you're, you're, you know what, I hate to say this, but you're a filthy, dirty, rotten sinner. Just like yeah. Oh, and yeah. you, don't, you don't want to, you never wanted God just like I did, but he wanted you. Yeah. That's the miracle of it all, isn't it? Yeah. That God Almighty wanted you. Why you? Why me? Why any of us? I know. You I know. The, I'm bubble. You know, and so yeah, and then it's interesting this whole journey that you were talking about, and it's like it's the discovery of things, and then you, of course David Ike is always part of the journey, the truth of their journey, right? Yeah. And guys like him are Terrence, uh, what's his name? Canna. Yeah, in the whole a a a the a a ayahuasca thing, and yeah. you know, I used to listen to a lot, uh, and actually was interviewed by. Um, Ian, Ian, what's his name? I can't think of the name of the show now. Anyways, mm -hmm. he was, he started out, and he actually he's done a lot of exposés exposing Terrence, and he was one of the guys that actually, he's the guy that was responsible for, uh, oh, Gnostic Media. And if you're in that time period when you're in your journey before him and the Lord and got into that, Gnostic media, and uh, I was interviewed by him way back when, because I have MS. One of the one of the, the side effects of me being involved in uh, the New Age movement and doing uh, the secret and doing visualization and all that other oh, stuff. Yeah. In fact, it's interesting you brought up the... Um, chemtrails and when i first discovered about the chemtrails and i remember i went into a meeting that was a uh, a course of miracles so just you know uh, yeah <laughs> i didn't know that was witchcraft either and yeah. i brought up there's all this positive nonsense and i said listen i said not everything's wonderful and positive there's things going on around here that people you know that's not good you need to not everything's love and peace you got to be real about this and i started bringing up the my the, the chemtrails note and my goodness that was one of the first times that uh, i was became aware of the changing of people's continents these loving women these peaceful loving women oh my gosh they changed in a heartbeat just like that <laughs> they brought up chemtrails <laughs> and I know my sister would laugh at me and my mom. Yeah. My mom, she recognized it. I would have told her, she oh, yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. And it's like, Mom, you know, I, I've been working all my life outdoors. You know what I mean? I know darn well that what's going on. This is back, you know, six years ago. And I was like, yeah. this is not what I grew up with. This wasn't even going on five years ago, Ma. This is not what's just going You know, and so anyways. Um and have my sister laugh at me. Of course, she's Roman Catholic. And then you got... Uh, it's so funny, the journey that you go through. You, it, it's it's all about, I think it's putting, learning to really put all your faith, all your eggs in one basket, Jesus Christ. And learning to develop that spiritual armor that you need. To be tough enough to go through this fallen and wicked world. And people don't... You know, it's not just cliche, it's not just theological, it's absolute, utter, real. <laughs> it's reality. Yeah. And you look at your own self, I know for, my, for me, God spent a long time allowing me to go over and over again, all my sins. And although, 
you know, um, he got a hold of me and, you know, and, and it started developing faith in him and, you know, the whole John 3.16 um, and developing this whole relationship and all the things that I've gone through, the, the, the Peter experience where I denied him and even called him a Lucifer, him Lucifer at one time and all this stuff. I mean, I had to go through yeah. all this stuff of my own. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ex outside of the world and how wicked it is and in how the, the, the whole new world order was nothing but more than the old world order. Sure. Nothing new about it at all. Yeah. yeah. It's only the new tower. The new tower of Babel, yeah. 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 You know, it's it's uh, um, you know, it's the whole same. It's the it's the whole same story over and over again where you got. God's people was always has been a very small group of people, and even in the midst of the, gro the you know the group of the God's people, there was a whole bunch of this, that, and the others, and there was only very few of God's people in in that group. You know, as they're walking through the yeah. wilderness and coming out of Egypt, and and uh, yeah, sure. and how you know it's really a personal walk, one on one with God, and that there's so much, there's something much greater out there. And, the, and with him, and after this life, it's, and it's not just psycho babble or just something to make us feel good, or a crutch, which, by the way, is there's not a better crutch out there that I can find. I've tried just about every crutch I could find, you know. <laughs> and, and it didn't help, you know what I mean? From dysfunctional relationships to uh, jobs to careers to chasing after money to. All the all the trappings of this world that really, literally, utterly mean nothing. Yeah, they really don't. I mean, like I'm an artist too and a musician, and I know it all about the. You know, my mom was into interior decorating and all that, and and, the, and it's nice to be creative. But even once a guy gets a hold of you, you even that loses all its m meaning. <clears throat> oh yeah, because you realize you're just play. You're like. An adult child playing in the adult child sandbox, and it literally is still just a sandbox. Yeah. yeah. And so you're, you're focusing and worrying on, on all the wrong things. None of it matters, yet the rest of the world's going after it, chasing after it. And one of the things that's very dis disturbing for me and disheartening for me is actually in the body of Christ that how few members... People that call themselves Christian, a, are interested in talking about Jesus or talking about God. Right. It's like a burden to them, even at church. <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? The people I talk to, um, people I spend time with, I mean, I, I realize I don't sometimes know much about their life. We just talk about God and the future, whereas people from my past, or like my mother, or whatever. Um, they'll live and hanker up the past, and you know, um, they'll live in the past because I live in the present and the future. But unbelievers will just live in the past, or do you remember that time when, or you know, or just old hang ups and hurts, you know, or I was abused as a child, or whatever, it, whatever it is, they'll live in the past. But you know, like, sometimes I feel like drawing up a table of comparisons between what I used to believe and what I believe now, and what Christ has done for me. Because just things like that, people, it, we brilliant. know it, but it's not apparent to them, you know, things like a table of different. That would be brilliant. That would be an actually brilliant idea. I live what a great idea. Future, unbelievers in the past, generally, you know, it's always talking about bringing up. Do you remember that time? And it, if I, even if I did see my sister, and this actually, that's what I meant to bring up earlier, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, I haven't seen my sister in four years, like, because she's demonically oppressed and she's her demons told her, her to cut me off but yeah if I, would, I know if I was to meet up with her now she would bring up all old memories do you remember that time when we got really high in this club and you know da 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 your dress caught in fire whatever you know people live in the past and that's one thing that's majorly different for me and I don't live in the past and I don't all those things you know um, I was a failure at this relationship that relationship I don't I don't dwell on those things now um you praise the Lord that you're a failure in all those things. Yeah, I think. Thank I God you're a failure. <laughs> and I'm translated into the kingdom of light. And so, um, obviously, when I sin now, you know, it pains me greatly. But before it didn't. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's painful when, when when you can fall into sin and stuff. But um, It's so hard to not to when you interact with the world. 
oh, I just said to God the other day, can you just make me a hermit? Because I can't, I'm struggling right now. Like, just try and disentangle yourself from certain situations and things that happen. And, or you can, one, one sin can be a gateway for like, like a pack of cars. It can all just collapse. And it's like, wow. And before you know it, then you've told a lie, then you've done this. And it's like, oh my gosh, so bad right now. But you do need to grow in God's grace and mercy and, you know, his mercy is fresh every morning. But, you know, I'm one of these people that will berate myself. Like, that's my nature, you know. Um, but also I did sit, sit under three years of, like, pastor that was pretty much, I did feel like I was in condemnation, but um, lacking in grace. But uh, well, then there's also the, the spiritual warfare that you're going under, just like me. And it's come to this realization that a lot of that, as much as we like to believe that it's our own thoughts, I've come to the conclusion that they're not. Yeah. It's a demonic realm that's trying to keep on oppressing yeah. you. And, you know, all yeah. this negative thinking and all that is because they want you, and they're going to work even harder on you. I know. What I discovered, too, is the closer you get to the God, the closer the devil comes along with it. Mm -hmm. And it's true, and his demons, because they're looking for that opportunity to bring you it's down. Like give the devil a foothold, yeah, like... By you give them legal rights, if you sin, they can then harass you and oppress you. Um, you know, I've heard all the arguments, can a, can a Christian be possessed? No, because they're possessed by the Holy Spirit, but they can they can oppress and afflict. And, um, you know, from time to time I will get sleep paralysis, but it's not, it's not like it used to be six times a night. It's a, fine you know, line, it's a fine love what you're saying there, okay? So, you know, people say a, a Christian can't be demon possessed. Well, that's, I, uh, I've seen otherwise, but... What I mean yeah. by that is, is there are a lot of people that are claiming themselves to be Christians, but it's only by tradition, mm -hmm. it's only by their belief systems, and not by having a personal relationship with Christ. There's okay. the difference. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and you are truly protected by the Holy Spirit, and He's he starting to indwell in you, and, and uh, starting the battle for you and all that, then yeah, you're... you're you protected. You can't be demon possessed. You can still be demon harassed and demonized. I can guarantee you that. Oh Especially yeah. Especially the more you get involved with the, the real battle, which is spiritual, um, that they're going to go after you. And so that all that, that. But if you're one of God's, you know what it's going to do? It's going to force you to fall on your knees and cry out to God more, which is then is going to develop more of a relationship with God, and that's how God uses that. Now, most people who call themselves Christians. I would have to say, either still are demonized or demon possessed. And the way I say that is because they don't want to talk about God. They don't want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to talk about these things. They just, you know what I'm saying? Well, they're not born again, yeah. Yeah, so. But that's it's such a, such a big deal. And what that means, and most people think they're born again because they joined the church and they got a water baptism. Oh yeah, oh, but yeah. it's not. That's 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 not what it means to actually be born again. Oh, and I know. Only if you read the Bible, and especially John, if you read all the way through, you have to be, you know, spiritually born, born again, not just mm -hmm. of water, but of fire or the Spirit of God. And so, if you don't, if that doesn't happen. And you don't receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, uh, and well, you're not truly safe. No. You know what I mean? As you yeah. said, even the even the demons and even the devil knows. Believe and tremble. Are. Yeah. So we worship the spirit and in truth. Yeah. And that's okay. another part of the matrix. And isn't it funny that the word matrix actually comes from the Bible? And oh, God talks cool. about that. If you read the first, like I, that's what I've been reading this past week. You know, uh, started the weekend, weekend uh, Genesis, and so I'm plugging along, doing that while doing everything else. So, yeah, uh, and um, there it is, the Matrix, and God's talking about the Matrix of of of, of Egypt and this whole Matrix system, and it's like, oh, of course, God, they they steal everything, don't they, God? <laughs> oh yeah, anything to keep you from reading the Bible, but you know. The Matrix is Satan, so. And, uh, That's true, yeah. I think it's fascinating um, as well that generational uh, familiar spirit can plague a family, you know. And oh, I know for sure. I can... This weird thing about my sister, when I um, 
when I came to faith, obviously, I were, especially down the rabbit hole, I was sending everyone links and, you know, um, look at this, even I was sending like images about Nero burn, you know, like you can burn a CD or DVD. And it was like showing like a coliseum with the flames, like, I was just showing them all imagery, like how, you know, persecution of Christians, like everything is against Christ. Um, and it's even in multi, all corporations around the world and signs and symbols. And I was very intense, you know, like, like hammering people with email after email, like images and da 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 da. Like, I, I mean, if I'd have been on the receiving end, I would have thought, you know, she's crazy. So, fair enough. But my sister did, um, I came back from Israel and, um, We've had an on-off relationship all of my life, really, because she's one of these people that reads things into situations, um, distorted thinking patterns, I guess, which a lot of people have. But um, often me and my mum would just be perplexed, and she'd just suddenly like go into a rage and say, you're this and you're that. And I'm like, how did you determine that from something that I said? You twisted it. So she's always the only people you could never... She was so intellectual and articulate, you could never like really... You just you admit defeat and you just brush things under the carpet because you wanted an easy life and you didn't want the relationship to be rocked and that was quite our relationship. But I was always too scared of her to really um, confront her and I've more of a boldness of late. But um, oh, I never used to be that way. And um, So anyway, when I came back from Israel in September 2014, I spent great lengths to write an email, well, no, a letter that I sent via post along with a Bible. And um, it took me two days to write on and off and editing, re-editing. I didn't want to cause any offence. And I wrote that in the opening statement, the opening paragraph, you know, I've laboured over this, that you would cause offence, but you would take this in the, in the, in the, um, in the way that it's meant and intended. And you would come from the pages of the Bible and um, God loves you, God rather, you know, because she would mentioned the Illuminati years before and it has gone way over my head and uh, it wasn't anything that she triggered that set me on my path, but I do remember just hearing conversation. I didn't know what she was talking about. And I said, yeah, I've joined all the dots, and, and Satan's the capstone. Until you understand that Satan is all an angel, you will not understand. They're not just evil elites with you know, the rich elites. It's far more beyond that spiritual. This is the big picture. And I said it all out as much as I could back in 2014, and um, with images and a letter. And she rang me up. I knew she'd have received it three or four days before she rang me and she she obviously been contemplating on it and rang me up and she was kind of like positive and then she'd break down in tears and she'd well my god my god you know because people make up in their own image my god wouldn't do that and it's not judgmental and I said don't know Louise like I don't make the rules like I know this is a hard thing to for me to swallow too I'm still wrapping my head around it and I cry out to God and I question like god tell me you help me understand hell and I like I want answers, you know, and what happened really in the garden of Eden and everything like that. I've cried out to God, I'm like sick and sick and sick and true. I can't, you know what I mean? I haven't got all the answers, but I know it's true. And um, and so she was like, yeah, 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 you're right, okay. Meet up tomorrow, okay? She said, great, we'll meet up. And uh, I said, it'll be okay, yeah? And we kind of both crying with both ends of the phone. Next morning I wake up and I have a text message like that. My thumb had to scroll like five times to read, you know, it was like an essay. And it was like, um, it was scathing. Her demons had basically been speaking to her and she ostracized me and said, it's no wonder your husband left you, you're dead to me, never contact me again. And um, yeah, so to give you the background story to that is um, a year before I went down the rabbit hole in July 2013, the previous summer I would been to this just like a festival, like a couple of days before day festival, just nothing, just a rubbish little thing, whatever, and then gone back to my mum's and we smoked like this skunk joint or whatever, like marijuana, and um, and then and then the next day we went back to the festival and she said, you know what, last night I had a really weird experience, mum, I was in bed and I heard all these voices telling me you're rubbish, you're, and swear words to her, you're, 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 you're this, you're that, and she said, and then I like, um, came out of my body, which I now know is involuntary astral projection. She told me she came out of her body and she couldn't get back in her body and all this sort of stuff. And I just thought at the time, I, that sounds weird, you know what I mean? And I'd always had sleep paralysis on a not since child, so it wasn't kind of that weird. But So when I went down the rabbit hole in 2014, all these things that I then researched, 2013, 2014, I realised spiritual and she was demonically oppressed. 
Plus, she was addicted to um, painkillers which should be, and marijuana for years and years, which is a gateway drug, isn't it, to door for the enemy. Plus, she has such a root of bitterness and unforgiveness in her life that it's eaten up, it's destroyed her and all her relationships. She, I haven't seen her in so many years. She, she said my mum's dead to her as well. Etc. So she has that root of bitterness which gives the devil a foothold, right? So um, I think it's quite interesting that... Um, I then tried to contact her a few other times and she said, don't you remember I said you're dead to me? So I know that, you know, people are listening to these season spirits. It's really real. And then then it was further confirmed by my nephew who she threw out when he was 17, only a few years ago. He was 20 now, but um, because he was smoking marijuana, even though she's a hypocrite, she smoked marijuana as well. He was getting in trouble with the police for, like, I think, attempted break into a car or something. But, um... Anyway, he was living on the streets, and I was trying to reach out to him three years ago, and my pastor and I were praying for him, and then he was messaging me like, on a, like a social media messenger, and he was saying, oh, what good are you doing for my mom? You're not helping her. You just read books about God, and da 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 Like, I'm trying to help her. Like, he was, like, into the new age from what I could see, like, things he was messaging me, and, like, because you can just find it all on YouTube, can't you? And then he said, oh, I've never told you this, but when I was... I think he was about nine when my dad died. Um, my dad, who died of alcoholism in his, in his late 50s, he said, yeah, my, my sister was an alcoholic as well um, for a period of her life. I don't know about now, but she was for a period of time because she got money from the car accident, she wasn't working, and da 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 She got like maybe half a million pound payout, anyway. So um, he said, yeah, when, when, you, when your father died, his granddad, he said that when um, when he died, your, my mum was screaming about Lucifer and that some spirit had come into her. So I think that's very interesting, that generational curse and spirit. So she doesn't know that I know this. and um, I don't know, I haven't tried to contact her again, but I think we should. So... Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, uh, it's interesting what you're talking about there when it comes to uh, the uh, the spiritual warfare with your family and all that kind of stuff. And you bring it up. You brought up the Illuminati and all that kind of stuff. And then the sister went berserk on you and all that kind of. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting for me. Uh, one of the things that, you know, I have the mother that I, uh, for my son, I have a six and a half year old son. Okay, and she broke up with me when. <laughs> it, it, and by the way, this is all God's, you know, allowed all this to happen so he can get a hold of me, uh, as he tear down all my idols and. Um, yeah. Never in AA, and she's a. You know, it's got. She's just. Real, I've seen her eyes change. I know that she's demon and well. I've seen her daughter's face change too. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, here's. I'm in a really good dad. One thing I could say is I've been a really, really, really good dad. Okay, and I've been put through an awful lot. Okay, an awful lot on this mom's side, and and I mean, I literally moved. Ten minutes walk away from her so that it could be convenient for her that I could have my son as much as possible. She's got custody of him. But I've had him most of his life. I've had him at least over half his life, okay? Half the, you know. And uh, that's why I wrestling with MS and a bunch of other things. And, well, God, you know, doing all this other stuff and doing all these miracles in my life, okay? So, anyways, about a month ago, and that's going on about three weeks ago, a month ago, uh, I told her daughter... Who's 23 and, you know, of the world, just got done with uh, a university and got it all figured out, right? <clears throat> and she's, mm -hmm. you know, living in sin and doing all the things she wants. So I said, listen, she dropped off my son and I said, I just want to tell you something. And God was really pushing that on me. I said, Jesus loves you and he wants you to change your life. And she looked at me and she's like, oh, yeah, sure, you know, yeah. I got it all figured out already. She didn't want anything to do with God, which, you know, and she was being real disrespectful. Anyways, uh, a week later, she drops off my son again, but um, and, but I, he wasn't, I wasn't scheduled to have him that night, and I'm just like, 
uh, I don't know what you, why why is, why are you guys here? He says, oh, mom said to drop him off, and I'm like, really? And then she she put you know I said no I don't think so because her mom's been using the heck out of me and I kind of said I've had enough I'm just being used and abused. <laughs> oh, you know the part of the problem is because uh, when there's a spiritual warfare going on okay and they're of the world and Christ has you know has got a hold of me and the demons inside of them and the demons around us they get involved in this whole thing and they cannot stand you know they think I'm the worst guy on the planet but if Based on my own behavior and everything else, you you could come to that conclusion, thanks to the Lord, you know what I mean? And I've been really good to her and a really good to uh, a father, you know. I've always been there. And uh, so, anyways, I haven't seen him now for two, three weeks. This has got to, it has to be going on three weeks now. It'll be three weeks Monday or Tuesday. Anyways... And her daughter comes back and she starts chastising me and said, "Did you teach? Are you teaching Chase about the Illuminati?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I had to." I, well, said, first I said, "No." And then I said, "But it is real." And the truth is, I had to explain to him about because he came to me talking about the Illuminati. He knows more about the Illuminati than the Word of God. Yeah. yeah, and then she started ripping on me about the flat Earth because you know I tell my son about the flat Earth, yeah, and about Jesus, and I just like God, I'm not putting up with this. I love my son, but I love you more. And Chase is the one person I love more than anybody. And God, if it means that to even lose my son, I, I'm still going to follow you. I don't care. And God, I put this in your hands after all these years of. They're just putting up with nonsense after nonsense after nonsense, praying and praying for them and all that. It had, I mean, I've been putting in your hands, God. I, get, I resign. I just, you know, I'm right here. They want to demonize me and make me out to be the worst guy that ever was and the worst parent. Uh, I'll just do what you want. So he's been having me really busy this past three weeks doing work for him. Yeah. My point bringing this all up is that this is par for course. This is. Uh, standard of what it's a, a true Christian walk is like. Now you might have your honeymoon season, but in the end, you're in the midst of a battle. Oh yeah. That yeah. you were always were in, and you were on the losing side, Part and you were death. losing. And now that you're on Christ's side, it's going to be even more intensified. And but you realize you're not losing anything. Is everything? All, all these things that seem so negative. If you just put your trust in God and let Him be the driver, He's going to just give things in your life that you've never had. Uh, you're going to grow in strength and faith in Him. You're going to really end up having a real relationship with Him. And uh, you just plug along. Now, a lot of people don't like hearing what you're saying, what I'm saying, based on how long we've been Christians. Because we're like 20, 30 years of being a Christian. Yeah. And maybe they were in our, I don't think most of them were ever in our place in the first place. But anyways, uh, the fact is, you, you have to, it's like, it's Jesus or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's the whole gamut, the whole matrix is against you to have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And a lot of times people are being used by the demonic realm and they're not even conscious of what their part is. You know what I mean? I mean, so it's just like you can't take any of a person. And what's one of the problems too with our in the culture that we live in is this pushing of the importance of emotion. Mm. You know what I mean? And our emotionalism, and like oh, the, my favorite thing: women are so much more emotional, and, and all this stuff. And men shouldn't be. Men and mom. Women have yeah, which is one of the biggest <laughs> pile of nonsense that ever was. And really, once you get anchored in Christ, you realize, yeah, yeah we're different. We have different uh, roles, but, but we, you know, God created a man and a woman to be a unified one, like body organism, to fight against this whole thing that we're dealing with, what we call the New World Order, the Matrix, or whatever, in order mm -hmm. to stand firm. You know what I mean? And, and um, and if you don't get that, God's still there. He can still be there with us, you know. Many of us, you know, that's not what's going to happen, you know. Uh, and others, it will. It's not what the focus should be on. The focus should be on Christ and Christ alone. And if something happens along the way, 
and he ends up giving you a great, you know, Christian man or a great Christian woman, you know, that's cool. But if it's, you know, not going to be focused on Christ, what's the point of even having it? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You're just asking yourself for more heartache and trouble. Yeah. It's the truth. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. it's just one of those things, that, you know, and Satan's going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at us. And this yeah. is guaranteed. And Christ told us that. He didn't come here to bring peace. The next time he comes, it ain't going to be too pretty. And so, there's a, you know, what side do you want to be on? I want to be on the side of Jesus Christ. I want to come back. I was talking to a brother in Christ about this text here. Is we're sharing, because God's given guys like us this kind of eyes. He's opened up our eyes just to look I know, through I the know. veil and see all these demonic entities and all that. And it's like, God, you know, brother, when I get a chance, I can't wait. When I'm, I, I pray, I'm part of Christ's army, and I come back, I want to beat the snot out of these demons that have caused so many millions and billions of people suffering. And it's, yes, there's our sin that allows all this to happen for them to have more and more control of us. But it's them in the end. They're our enemy. And there is, a, there is righteous anger, but it's not against the fellow man. It's against these damn things that have caused all the rest of these guys to go absolutely nuts and mm -hmm. create things like the New World Order and the Illuminati and to practice yeah. witchcraft and everything because they're under the control and the spell of these things. And That's they're real. Um, yeah, and I... And you were, were, you were, and I was, and there's still some still left in us. Yeah. And it's a work in progress, and it's like uh, how wicked this world really is. And you know, we're not insane. The no, world's no. insane, and everything. The uh -huh. law reversal has been applied to everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. <laughs> everything turned upside down and back to front. You know, they're, they're good. At, they'll say good is evil, and evil is good, and woe to them. It says um, scriptures say so. It is. I just see it all, and I just marvel at the whole amazingness of it. Like God told us through His Word, false religions. We can see that other religions can't see their pagan. We have the truth, and we are, you know, the church is the foundation and pillar of truth. It's just amazing. Um, you know, and when we say pagan, what do we mean? Well, what we mean is that these people are under the influence of the demonic realm and worshiping these demons. Demons, uh, whether, they, yeah. whether they know, whether they know it or not, listen. The vast majority of people are demonized and are following demons. Don't even realize that. Yeah. You know, those that do are the ones at top. That's the Illuminati. Is it goes beyond even the Jesuits and Rome and everything else. There's literally those that are in the know understand who they worship. Mm. So bad. And, and it's just just like in the Bible, just like when he talks about the Canaanites and all the otherites and everybody in the Mo Moabites and those you know <laughs> worshiping Baal and Moloch and everything. These these were real demonic entities. They weren't just statues. No, what an angel! I find history fascinating, and then there's channels like now you see TV and other people that Gary Wayne went a lot of dots together and then actually I was supernaturally drafted into the British Museum last year when I was at um, literally I went I organised a Bible tour with this guy that's written a book called Evidence of the Bible and various other books being sold in the British Museum in London and he does Israel tours um, and because there's a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses tours of, of the British Museum and I was like, trying to find one among the four of Jehovah's Witnesses ones found what I thought was a good legitimate guy and um so I tagged along to the first one. The second, the second time, I, I wanted to create one for the church that I was going to at the time and invite lots of people. And it was a great tour. And then um, after the tour, just as I was walking out of the building, like one of the main entrances, I thought, oh, I'll just pop in there. It's something about the Jericho skull. And I went in, and it was just a tiny exhibition. They have a lot of, well, see, look, got the exhibitions that are there 20, 30 years, and then they have. The exhibitions that come and go and do a nationwide or international tour, you know, that um, make museums in the world. And this one's called Jericho Skull, and I just literally whistle stop, walked around it. And I thought, oh, you know, there's a lot of truth here, but it's always skewed, you know, or the, 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 the timeline is not right, it's like 9,000 years old, or all that, that doesn't work, or something, you know. So, 
time. Always by a secular, you know, theologian, or whatever, like, not theologian, secular historian, archaeologist. So, anyway, I thought, oh, I'd love to work here. So, when I got home, I just looked on the British Museum job board, and I thought, well, they pay way below, because it's public sector, way below what I could afford to live in London. But, oh, well, I've looked. And um, a few weeks later, because I was a temp, I was between jobs, and I emailed all of my temp consultants saying that I'm available for work on such and such date. And um, and one literally replied within a, a couple of minutes saying, I've got just the job for you at the British Museum. This is true. Can you believe it? God knows it just bars your heart. Seriously, I ended up working there for three months on a contract in the corporate relations department, so where they get sponsorship for... And I ended up writing the post sponsors sponsor the report for the Jericho Skull that I just dipped my head in to go and look at this before I left the building. So I was like, Wow God, you're you're pretty awesome, like who could have orchestrated this but yeah, you know, like you've got a funny sense of humor. <laughs> I was just like that's awesome. yeah, definitely. Sounds yeah. like God, he works that way all the time. It's just yeah. Just, and as a temp, I'm glad I worked. I worked at companies like Google. Um, airway solutions and I've researched all about electronic warfare and 5G and uh, electronic warfare and so he's shown me and he's confirmed everything I've researched along the way. I worked at American Defence Company Northbrook Grumman at the UK headquarters and I was there when Trump was being inaugurated or whatever you call it back in um, January or late of uh, 2017. 16, 16, um, and I, his, I was working uh, in front of house, and there was just his, his Trump, Trump face on 24-7 on the TV, and I thought, oh my gosh, everyone in the office is like pro-Trump, and, um, and then uh, the head honcho from America came over, like literally rolled out the red carpet, came to his bodyguard and everything, and uh, and uh, I sat in the boardroom meeting, there's only about 20 people in the London head office. Um, but there's a lot of people in satellite offices. But, um, and it was like, yeah, you can't post anything anti-Trump because I'm too late. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> because you'll get the act from the job. And also, Trump, this guy says Trump might think he's in control, but he's not. He's just a puppet. He basically says that. And I just thought it was all interesting because like, all the stuff I've researched, but God's just shown me step by step. And uh, while I was working there, okay, I was just near this recycled copy point and I was just tidying up. People never put stuff in the right recycle bins, right? You can have a you can have a bin showing like banana skin tick, another bin like this has got plastic bottles, tick, cross. They all just never sort the rubbish, right? This is human nature. Anyway, so someone had obviously had to sort out of their office and just like chucked everything just near 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 the bin location but not anywhere near the bin. So I was like, okay, I've got to tidy this up. And uh, I just picked this up, this lone, this random lone drinks coaster, which was obviously like a bit of branding, marketing stuff that they'd done previous years or something. Um, and it was this, um, this eagle uh, with like arrows, like lightning, and it said rolling meadows and uh, electronic warfare systems. And uh, this is all the stuff I've been researching, and uh, it just confirmed all the stuff I'd researched, and it's a as part of Illuminati anyway. It's just like, God, it's just showing me time after time when I went to the British Museum, I was hearing about the Rothschilds, the even other bloodline families that had been sponsored. When I was there, they were pushing the um, um, transgender and um, heter- homosexual agenda. Uh, like, everything, virtual reality, everything has been pushed. I'm watching on YouTube about Christians are exposing what's going on in the world and, um, and the things that they're trying to push. So, They've got like exhibitions at the time that they were promoting about um, homosexuality, like through the ages, through you know, um, this is just how we are, how one is born. You know, like Lady Gaga born this way. It's all part of just it, it, the indoctrination of the minds of the youth. So the, we will sow the fruits of that. You know, the next generation of people to rule the world. And um, it's like, well, we're born this way, and look throughout history, you know, there's been buggery and all this stuff, and look at all these little idols and men buggering each other, and you know what I mean? It's like this is like this is this is how we are. This is, you know, it's just sick, and they're bringing young school kids there to show them an exhibition about homosexuality. And, um, yeah, you, you know, it's, 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 the truth is, the truth is, what they're saying is the truth. That is redundant, wasn't it? But anyways, uh. The fact is, without 
God, and it's not the Spirit of God. You're, ex- you're exactly right. Because of our fallen state and because the, our, as being becoming empty vessels for this demonic realm, they're right. You know, this our proclivity or our, our, our character or nature is to actually to uh, Romans 1. You know what I mean? If you read it through, you say, yeah, without God and denying who God is and having a personal relationship, these people are behaving just like they should. Yeah, yeah. And that's the part of the hard things to accept is is that they're behaving exactly the way they should. And that, you know, because they're in their fallen state and people think, well, things are just getting worse and worse and worse. And in a lot of ways they are, especially when it comes to witchcraft and sorcery that's going on. But also, it's also, you know, you know, we're told it's supposed to be eventually get to the days like Noah. So, I mean, how is that going to get to that point? If you really look at what's going on, like I've been reading, you know, the Exodus. You know, you had to deal with uh, the giants, the physical giants, but then you had to deal with all the sorcery and witchcraft and the demon worship that all these cultures were under. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's all that's happening right before us. And uh, I, I do believe that there's a strong connection between witchcraft and sorcery and allowing these uh, genetic freaks of nature, whether they're products of the fallen ones, the fallen angels or not, um, or they're the inspiration of them, but it's like God pretty much is going to hand everybody over. If you don't accept them, they're gonna, you're going to get handed over. And I know that's a terrible thing to say to you. It sounds like you're being a Bible basher and a self-righteous Christian, but I'm not. I'm just telling you, I don't even know why I got saved. I don't deserve it. I deserve to go to hell just like everybody else. Did you have a love for the truth, maybe? He gave that to us. Yeah. Of, you know, he, that is one thing I never had. I lived in Katie World. I don't know where this came from. I never had a desire to research this stuff out. Um, once I think I realized it affected my soul in a very profound way, then I was hooked. Because it affected yeah. me. If, if something never affected me... You know, that's why we, we have, like, this um, horrible indifference to other people. We see homeless people, like, most people, even Christians, will walk on by. You know, we have this horrible indifference. And if it affects you in your own world, in your own, own sphere, you know, we push it to the back of our minds and we just press on through and it doesn't affect us. But I realise there's a spiritual war and it does affect me and there's a war for myself. Then I was, like, hooked. That was the hook. And then, like, I believe in Christ without... I didn't, because I was using Christ's name to rebuke a demon, and I still, the world was anti-Christ. Then I became, I had my faith, which I believe this is the truth. Then, secondary things that I looked into were just of interest, but I already believed. I didn't, these weren't stumbling blocks, like, oh, evolution's a lie, and, you know, these, like, mon- Lucy monkey bones, or whatever, is a fraud, and whatever, and, you know, looked at Ken Hoven, and all these other things, and then eventually Flat Earth, like, which is the bonus, but, like, they were not a grounding to my salvation, I just knew it was a spiritual war. And um, and then, then the other things were like a bonus that I found fascinating to look into. And I was like, I have a love for the truth. It stemmed, stemmed from that initial realization that there's a war for my soul. It's the spirit, that, that's, a, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why I have it. That's yeah. It. yeah. He's, he's the way, the truth, and life. That's it. So the reason why <laughs> he grabbed a hold of you and he had to wake you up by giving you that desire for the yeah. truth. Yeah. Did you, yeah. did, were you just in the States? Yeah, for the Here the Watchmen conference. That was great. And I, I love meeting up with Jared, Tom, Mike Kerr of Here the Watchmen, his wife Jeannie, uh, Taylor, um, various people that I've seen from afar. And then to meet him fresh at Castle McLeod and people. Now that was in Texas, right? That was so cool. Yeah, really, really great. Um, what, what's, where was that at in Texas? Texas, yeah. Okay, okay. Really great. I really loved it. It was so good. I guess you met Rob Skiba and all the other guys there, I guess. Yeah, that was kind of only arranged a week or so before I flew out there. It was funny, quite quite funny, because that was just about, I think, eight or ten of us. And um, Jared just said, oh, you going to that event? I said, I don't know about it. And he said, oh, put me in touch with Matt Long. And then um, I said, yeah, that's great. If I can come along, why not? And um, 
and then we were just before the live stream we were just having pizzas and stuff and um I, I could kind of, I was having a conversation but my ears was twitching because I could hear my name being talked about and I know Jared was sort of saying Rob Skiba like I've been on you know he was maybe talking about who was there and he said oh yeah Katie she's been on my um radio show and blah 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 she's from, from the UK so he came striding over and introduced himself, although I sure knew who he was. And he said, yeah, I hear you've come all the way from the UK, as if to say, like, for this event, to meet him. I'm like, well, yeah, for here at the Watchmen Conference, this is just, like, thing on the side. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that would classically make me a stalker if I came all the way from the UK just for, like, a two-hour event. <laughs> is that all it was for two hours? Oh, two, three, maybe three hours, yeah. That was all it was. I thought it was longer than that. It was a couple of days. What kind of conference is only for Oh, no, no. The Rob Skiba thing was just because he lives in Texas. It wasn't that long. But okay. there was a whole thousand of us there. Oh, he the Watchman in Dallas at the Hilton Hotel in Texas. But this was something separate from that whole conference. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, it was just like, by the he thought I'd come there all the way for that. I'm like, no, that wouldn't actually make me officially your stalker. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know if you well, know about me, and, but I'm, I'm, I'm the Bigfoot guy now, and so I, I'm really... Yeah? yeah? I was always on the fringe before, because before, you know, nothing but the truth, and guys like uh, Johnny Cerucci. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, and those kind of guys... Uh, uh, and uh, Visigoth, Keith Hansen, you probably know, I don't know if you know him, but... I don't know him, I know Johnny, um... So I was on, I was on, I was on the extreme of, of, like, exposing Rome and the Jesuits and all that, so a lot of the evangelicals that you're talking about know of it, but try to steer away from it, and couldn't, you know, they're now coming around to it, thanks to the Flat Earth, because I was involved in the Flat Earth movement, too, and... Back in 2015, I was interviewing That's when all I those started, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was interviewing all those guys. I actually, post reposted some of them on my YouTube channel from Nothing But the Truth. Of interviewing some of the folks I did, interviewed in Flat Earth way in the beginning. Yeah. Or whatever. Where just you know, but I had to move on because it's just there's a wall to the Flat Earth thing. I, I do, this is it's what I God's yeah. convinced me. This. this is what He's taught me. Okay. There is a firmament, as it says in the Bible, to divide the waters from the waters. The reason why it's blue up there is because it's water. Yeah, yeah. There's water down here. And God's never going to tell you much more than that. The earth is flat, but you're not going to know the whole extent of the quote-unquote cosmology or cosmogony of this world or what's out there. A, because man will take credit of that and worship it, as it's doing now, is a false idol. And B, there's a bunch of fallen angels and demons that would love to get back to the third heaven. And so God's never going to tell man the truth. So all this is just a big giant deception. I'm not saying that this is a deception, the earth is flat or there's a firmament. I'm just saying when it comes to the the whole heliocentric model and the space thing and everything, it's all just a big giant deception in which the vast majority of people involved with it actually believe in the deception. And how did that could be so possible as spiritual? And God taught me through, of all things, Bigfoot. <laughs> through Bigfoot research and researching the Bigfoot community and all these people that research and believe it's an animal, and when it's clear as day that it's, de it's a demonic en entity that's manifest and we capture... I mean, the reason they, they, they originally developed film was not to film you and I was, and the television, but was to find a technology to communicate with the other side. And they made that very clear. Yeah. In order, in order to um, commune with the demonic realm, the fallen realm. The, you know, the channel, these entities. That's what it really yeah. was for. Yeah, and, I've yeah. seen that on Ghost Hunters and things like that. And then Laura Maxwell's channel has done stuff where people have a... They can record stuff on a voice box that's demon, yeah. demonic entities, isn't it? But they'll be deceived spirits saying that they're, you know... Yeah. I mean, I got, I got photos from 150 years ago of demons in it, of people taking their picture taken, you know, a family portrait. Because that's what originally was designed for. <laughs> Wow. People, people don't understand something. You and I, we're so disconnected from reality. We don't realize 
the stronghold of witchcraft and sorcery is. But the Bible brings it up over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then once you can accept that, that that's a reality, then God starts teaching you. Prophetic. It is a reality. It is a cross, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's literally a bunch of people that practice uh, sorcery and witchcraft, that that worship demons, that work with demons, that control this world. Yeah, I know. And the only way to have any any way out of it, in order to be saved from it, is Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And you can hear over and over again about the, the Israelites how they kept on going back into that because that's what they do, and it's you know it's it's because you know following Christ is not easy. It's an easier way of life than the, in the end because you realize the path is easy when you reflect on it, and you realize He's saving you from all this wickedness and eternal damnation. But you know it's people don't really. It's, we were trained to think that witchcraft was only for Hollywood. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Strange people in the fringe. It turns yeah, out, yeah. we're the strange people on the fringe. <laughs> oh, I know. I got heavily rebuked by my old pastor saying, "Katie, even the teenagers know about Illuminati." I'm like, as in, just you know, they think you know these satanic Hollywood bows kind of stuff. I'm like, no, I look at it a little deeper, and I watch like Chris Spring Ryan, people like compromised, whatever. I don't know, but Gary Wayne and stuff. I, I want to understand that understand the deep things that actually are confirmed in the Bible. It's not extra biblical. This stuff is in the Bible. You just need to scratch the load of surface, you know? Yeah, it's not it. like we're fringe. This is in the, the Bible. That's what annoys me. You know, there are books being taken out of the Bible that, you know, they, they talk about the book of Joshua and the book of Jude and Enoch and stuff. It's referenced in the Bible. And the... About the giants and the Nephilim stuff. Um, that was their worldview, different from like Christianity of today and what's been watered down, down over the years and stuff like you and all these other things that, through even just the flattest perception now, it holds in, in people that I would hold in high regard, like God has shown me people that I would have put on a pedestal, but much like my ex husband who used to just promote big, big, every word just because I thought he sounded like an intellectual. He has shown me and just, just, just taking them down a peg too, and to just like literally trust more in my own um, things that God's shown me, and not just you know they might be great Bible teachers, but they have blind spots, and they vehemently just deny the flat and be very, very. Um, then I, I, I watch their stuff, but they would actually call me delusional and um, be very, very ugly to like me. And um, I, I know that they're just deceived and it's hard. I got I know the truth from me and I know. So that keeps me, gives me strength. But yeah, it's very ugly actually. Christianity, you know, um, and everyone says the truth, you know. Just, just so imagine I'm very curious to anyone that says God's shown me. <clears throat> Just imagine what it must have been like for uh, the Israelites as they left out of Egypt and then spent 40 years in the wilderness and how ugly that must have been. Because, I mean, really what we're experiencing is exactly what they were experiencing. Everyone's under this illusion that the Israelites were all yeah, unified yeah. and all that, you know. No, they weren't. There were constant good rebellions analogy. and, and yeah, good analogy. And, and, you know, you're talking about a, a couple million people roaming around in the desert, which is a miracle in its own right. I mean, it literally, it, 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 wasn't it even a desert back then? You know, that's another question in its own right, too. Especially with all the things that I'm discovering, what the demonic realm is doing to God's creation right now. With the forests and all that, in combination yeah, yeah. of, the, of uh, the chemtrails and then what the demons are doing. I mean, that's a... a and you'd be absolutely shocked with what I've discovered about what these things can do. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, open here. You know, that'd be something for another day. I mean, I talk about it quite a bit. I mean, I do these, you know, short little videos of me going out and show like an X structure. Have you, like, I've missed all of this. I don't know where I've been, but that's uh, I mean, yeah, that's one of the things I'm doing right now. Uh, I say, uh, it, and if, uh, he, if you listen to this, brother, my brother, my friend, Corey, thank you for all the equipment and all that. He bought me a bunch of stuff because like, I got to do a movie, like one of those movies on the Internet, you know, about this. I mean, <laughs> I got thousands and thousands of images of demons and everything that's on. And, and pretty much it gets done. Anybody watches that because, you know, you, you see a lot of stuff that, 
suggest is it's you know it's, you know witchcraft is real and demons are real. But I, God, for some reason, me and a couple other people, he just opened up our eyes and said, "You got to show this for for what it really is." Absolutely. So there's no doubt or denial that Satanism, witchcraft, and demons are real, and demons are real, real, and that uh, people, the body of Christ needs to be prepared for this, because um, the veil is going to be lifted. Yeah. yeah. You know Russell yeah. does work, yeah? yeah? Yeah, he lives in my state, too. Yeah, yeah. that was cool. He lives in Ohio as well, like yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right? Don't Ohio. Do you know what? Every single time, like, I... Out of all my Facebook Christian friends and the Bible Belt and stuff, most seem to always pop up as Ohio. I think we should do a conference in Ohio. I know there is one coming up. But there is one coming up, but I think like we should do it. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my gosh. Go to England. Although I have to tell you, I don't even know if I'm allowed to go back in England. I have to check on that. I was deported out of England. Um, So I, don't, I think it was only like eight years that last and then you're your ban is lifted if you're American. What? Why? I overstayed my visa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I overstayed my visa, that's all. Just like so many others, you know what I mean? So I was an illegal alien in my mother country. <laughs> Funny how they call it alien, but there's alien, the word alien in the Bible, isn't it, as well? Yeah. yeah. And my descendants coming from England and, and Ireland... In, in that whole area of the UK, and uh, I'm an illegal alien <laughs> in my own home country, my my, my family's home country. It's just, anyways, it's just how the world is, you know what I mean? It's all screwy, and it's all about, as you know, about divide and conquer, and it's all like yeah, yeah. this group, that group, and they're all man-made constructs to keep people from really focusing on what really matters. I know, I know. You know what I mean? And then when you finally, by the mercy and grace of God, he gets a hold of you. And then you just this whole journey and just teaching you. If you're really going to be one of his, you're going to learn this has nothing to do with religion. No. no. This is about having a personal relationship with your creator. Yeah. yeah. And do you know how I knew I was saved? Because I couldn't, I couldn't muster up the fact that you do. It's just pray without ceasing, but... Prayer is not just on your knees because that's okay, that's a humbling thing, but prayer is communing with God and lifting your spirit up to Him all the time. And He knows you know, and you're like in that moment, and you're just like, oh God, and you're just like little power prayers, like up to God. And um, what should I do in this situation? Or it's sort of like a running monologue, but you know you're being heard, but it is weird because. It does feel like a one-way communication many of the times, but you know that you trust the word of God that your prayers are being heard because you have faith. And I couldn't have instilled that in myself. It's not something I have to muster up. It's something I believe, and it's something I don't question. I know because I trust the word of God. And that's well, this way, the, the faith in God is more real than faith in yourself, right? Say that again. Your faith in God is more real than faith in yourself, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's um, pretty real. Because most, really real. most people, you know, they lie about their faith in themselves. They have to read constant books to try to convince themselves and persuade themselves that they're more than they really are. Mm, no, I know where I, I know my humble about it. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to look at oneself, but you have to self-examine your heart and yourself regularly, daily, and that is a form of prayer. Like, God, I... I can't reveal, I, I can't hide this part of myself, I know, I'm I'm sharing, he already knows, but it's like, I'm confessing my sins to you, you know, confess your sins to you, it's faithful to forgive and love, you know, so. Yeah, you know, another, way, another great way to communicate or com, uh, commune with God is something that I, I rediscovered uh, uh, this week with reading, and reading the Bible not to yourself, but out loud. Yeah. yeah. There's something powerful about it. And as you read it and discipline yourself, especially getting through the, the Torah, let's be honest, the Torah <laughs> is a bit of a challenge and it's, you know, it's repetitive and all that, but there's a reason for it for many reasons. You know, there's many reasons for it. But one of the things I discovered is, is when you read it out loud, you start to read it in the cadence that it was originally meant to, 
to be read. And there's a, a flow to it, like the waves of the sea. And I know that sounds new agey, but it's I, yeah. it's not. It's just there's, there's the way they, they wrote it. And yeah. And it, it, it's like when you read it out loud, it seems like there's a lot more power to it, even if it's just yourself. And it seems really strange, but... Oh, yeah, more, I believe in that. More, yeah, the, it's so... It's like other books, you kind of like... There's power in the song, isn't there? There's power and there's frequencies and the New Age have just hijacked that, but there is truth in that. You can look at frequencies. Uh, I can't remember what the actual thing is called, but I've seen on YouTube where you'll put like um, running water or grains of salt or sand on a speaker and it'll just look like what the New Ages would call sacred geometry and it'll come out in beautiful... Um, patterns like snowflakes yeah. you nothing know I mean? so there is power in the vibration of sound but also there's power in the tongue there's so many scriptures about that that you know um you can bless and curse with your tongue and uh what an unwieldy thing unwielding thing our tongue is i mean it's learned to control it because we can bless and curse people and there's power in the tongue so there is a lot of truth in that and that's very deep and spiritual more than we can comprehend you know? absolutely so, yeah. I mean, everything, everything that comes out of the world is, this, I mean, this is like stars. And the Bible says they're angels. They're literally angels. Um, and guys like myself, you know, um, you know, the P900 and taking pictures and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, I got videos out there that just pretty much prove it. I mean, it's, they're not balls of gas and they're not, you know, gazillions of miles away. They're literally in the firmament, like God said. And the firmament actually extends to where your nose is and where you're breathing. So I'll just let you know, <laughs> as the Bible tells you, if you read, you know, the the, the uh, very first chapter of Genesis, it'll tell you specifically that's the case. But you know, at the upper firmament, obviously, there's that something that the barrier that God's created that's whatever gold and silver it seems that way, hued metal, whatever. Whatever it is, it's something, some miraculous thing that God created. Anyways, at the upper level of the, uh, the firmament is where the, the sun and the moon and the stars are. And the stars are 100% uh, yeah. angels. Angels. In fact, there's the same thing. A lot of them look just like those orbs that we capture images of and of the de uh, Bigfoots and Dogman and all this stuff. If you look real clear, you know, and there's, there's like multiple entities in these stars, some of them, and... Some have, you know, only a couple, and they all have different looks about them. And you can just you can tell they're living things. Definitely. Um, you just, you're breaking up there. Oh. Did you see me? No. Oh. Um. Well, you want to just throw something on, on Skype? I mean, you can turn it on if you want. No, um... I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, I was just telling you about that the stars are absolutely 100% living things. Oh, yeah, I think I was things. reading Matthew 24 or something today. I was at a Bible study teaching day, and um, it was just saying that the stars will fall from the sky. Um, I'm like, yeah, not from space, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's true. And, only, and, you know, when they fall from the sky, what is it? He didn't say they come down and hit the ground and they make giant craters and all that kind of stuff. I think they're going to come down just literally as they say, and... I mean, there's going to be an angelic conspiracy warfare, and the angels do not look like what the Roman Catholics tell you. I can tell you that right now. They do not look like that. Now, I'm not saying that they can't morph into look like human beings like what Aaron went through, or not Aaron, what Abraham went through in Lot, but most of these things do not look like what you would think. And we're not prepared for this. The, the freak show that we're going to experience, that they were, we're going to think it's a freak show, by the way, we're not going to be ready for it. An awful lot of people aren't. If it's this generation or the next or two generations, whatever it is, people got to be prepared for what's really going to happen here because, I mean, it's going to be... I mean, just Can you imagine the days of Noah and that past 200, that 120 years? And just, I mean, before even, you know, the, the days of Jared and... But even then, you know, even after that, by the time the crescendo, by the peak of the madness and wickedness that the flood happened, you, know, you opened up the windows of the sky and then the, the fountains of the deep, right? That um, it must have been an absolute freak show. Yeah. yeah. It must have made Lord of the Rings look like 
nothing more than what the Lord of the Rings is. It's just witchcraft. But you mean well, just yeah. <laughs> That's what I find amazing is that all the things that you thought were myth, true legend. So I know LA Marzoli and people like that do the true legend conferences and, you know, all the myths, the titans and things like that and um, actually are based on truth. Everything we've been taught in the world is being a lie and truth is stranger than fiction, literally. And Marvel Comics and everything has been controlled through the mystery schools, through Rosicrucianism and everything like that, even J.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and everything, they've all had a in the occult and have had a veneer of Christianity even. And I mean, it, the deception runs so deep that who can you trust? And, and I think that's a big part to play in even Christians who are like fighting and warring against each other because there's so much distrust, because there's so much deception and you wake up to deception. Um, it even breeds more distrust amongst each other, you know, because I know I've looked at certain ministries and I've, over the years, like, thought they were a deceiver, then then I've, then they've won back my trust, and I'm like, I don't know, I'll just come by every window of doctrine, because there's just so much deception out there, you've got the heat of the movement, and you've got sucked into that, and then you start questioning everything, and then I'm like, who am I to know? I don't know the Bible well enough. I, for my own sins, I've spent too much time on YouTube and not enough in the Word of God and given by the Holy Spirit, God is into all truth. I'm like, who am I to judge? I don't know. But I know that not everyone has the whole truth. And then the Hebrew Root Movement have done a lot of work towards showing, you know, how we don't celebrate the, the biblical feasts and, you know, Easter and Christmas and Halloween and all the compromise and that, you know, and I just see how hard to agree with all of that. Yeah, you gotta be That's careful with all that, don't you? So I, I've been in a position where I've, I've, in a turmoil, I couldn't even convey. I mean, there's been a lot of turmoil. I'm like, God, I just, you know, you know what I discovered because I went through the same thing in the very beginning. It got, you know, you know okay. in the Seventh Day Adventists, and of course, I suppose the Romans, the Jesuits, and all that, and the, yeah. and this whole Sabbath thing and all that. But you know, uh, as time has gone on and God has worked with me. It's all about Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. And literally every day to me at this point in my life, to be honest with you, pretty much about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The thing uh, is, they, it, they have all know. these intellectual pursuits and having rightly divided the Word of God and this and that, but if you know all the mysteries of God, if you know all this and the other, but you have lots of love or charity, then you're nothing. So I always keep going back to that and thinking, well, okay, you guys are arguing, you know, you're falling out over the pre-trib, mid-trib, or pre-rapture debate, and you're you're falling out of fellowship over that. That is ridiculous. So that's nothing surprised about that. So, like, I can be thinking, well, okay, I don't know if you deceived here, I don't know if you deceived there, but the biggest deception is self-deception. You know, you can be living like the devil and think you're saved, and yet you might have all your doctrine completely right. And that's the biggest thing I see, because I've, I've been duped by Christians who think they're holier than now, and they're actually, they are so living, they're worse than secular. But some of these Christians men think they're Adonises, and uh, they're absolutely shocked, I've been shocked by what I've seen. You know what I mean? And even in my own life, like, I can shock myself and thinking, what does it matter about this and the other unless you are actually have a humble, contrite spirit? You know, people seem to to miss the whole big idea. It's like they're just intellectuals. It's really, really mind boggling. Well, one of the things is like that comes to eschatology and and Book of Revelation is that uh, a lot of it. I believe, once again, goes back to sorcery and witchcraft, this whole idea of predicting into the future what God's plans are, instead of, you know, God made it very clear that he's a much, his ways are, are not man's ways. His ways are much bigger and grander than anything the man could think of. So why are we wasting our time about all those things? I mean, it's good to have the basic signs, you know what I mean, about what to look for and that kind of, but to waste so much time on it, as I did, by the way, God, you know what God did to me? He, 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 literally, he literally said, "Okay," uh, and I was so puffed up and prideful. I said, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go down this. Um, uh, what is it? It's not pre-trib, but 
and not futurism, but preterism. I'm going to let you go down the oh, right. this, this preterism, uh, and, and I'm going to let you get so wise and so smart, and in the end, don't think you're going to be so confused, you're going to actually believe that I'm yeah. Lucifer. Oh, my God. And then I'm going to let you get crushed, but then I'm going to raise you again, and I'm going to teach you things that you never knew, like my Peter moment. And so... After that, I'm just like, oh, okay, God, I get the picture, you know. It's, I don't know anything, do I? Even in this book, though, this book was all designed for one thing, that I'm a sinner and there's no hope outside of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Period. That's it. <laughs> it's about him. And you know yeah. what I mean? And submit to him and let him work with you and he will change you and make you what he wants out of you. Yeah. Stop yeah. worrying about all the things. I mean, it's good to know all the moral codes and the commandments and how to behave to please God. But in the end, is that what it's about, to please God? Or is it getting to be religious? You know what I mean? Are you getting religion again? Are you want to fall back into bondage or freedom? Christ will take you to places you'll never imagine if you let him. And you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And I so a lot of my brothers, as you you mentioned earlier, that I care about, I I see clearly what's happening to them. They don't see it right now because of the they're getting the recognition and all that, and, and that's cool. Um, but um, that's not what it's all about, man. It's about it's you know, Katie. It's about having just a walk with with God, an absolute abiding faith in Jesus Christ, and that's you know the this. Submit to him, be a slave, his servant, and that's not religion. That's not. He's going to do something with you, Katie, that you have no idea yet. You're just—he's now planting the seeds and the ideas of what that's going to be for the foundation of it. You know, if it's going to be a movie, is it going to be a book? Is it going to be something like you know, with your art and whatever it's going to be? He's going to use you whatever he wants to. I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, you know what I mean. But what I would do, well, I can't tell you what to do. But I know what I'm doing. I'm just falling on my knees as much as I can and just submitting to him. Say, okay, God, if you want me to read the whole Bible on the on, on, on the, <laughs> the talk shoe community call, I'll do it. Okay, if you want me to, to interview folks, I'll do it or talk to them. You know what I mean? You want to make you want me to make a movie about the. The images I'm capturing of demons, I'll do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Because it doesn't matter anymore. This place is going to hell in the handbasket, and there's nothing you and I are going to do to change it. Everyone says that hell in the handbasket, and I'm thinking, where does that come from? I have no idea. What does it mean? <laughs> probably for some witch or something. I don't know. Probably, we're probably cursing each other by saying that, and I have no idea. <laughs> Going to hell in the handbasket, but everyone says it. But it's that in actually what it's that. It's Christians who just saying that without really knowing the origin. But I run it. Great point. <laughs> Absolute point. Great point. How many things yeah, that yeah. we do that unconsciously and thoughtlessly yeah. we do. And that's probably another reason why we had to keep falling on our knees and praying out to God. <laughs> You know, our heads are full of nonsense, you know what I mean? If you're right about that, what does that actually mean? It actually doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of, it just kind of sounds the well. Chat, someone else in Jared and uh, through the Black's chat room, it's called the Holy Hand Brigade. Hand, hand grenade, isn't it? It's quite, quite funny, yeah. But like, going to hell in the hand basket. What? <laughs> like, is that a picnic basket or what? Well, I, I think we I think we should probably end this um, <laughs> only because uh, not just because it's getting kind of long and I want to be able to. Okay. I'm going to have to compress this anyways. This file on MP3 smaller and bring it down. Yeah. Because yeah. of the length, because it, it's going it, to you um, YouTube We're won't accept it. So, anyways, the, but what I wanted to do is say thank you, Katie. Yeah, thank you. Cloud, although it's spelled like not a cloud. I don't know. It's everyone <laughs> wants to say my. McLeod, right? McLeod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's McLeod. And, uh, I, yeah, let's, let's contact. Let me know when you're free. Um, I, I should have. Well, I know Thursday I got an interview. Hopefully Saturday I have an interview. Sometime next week I'm supposed to do Mark, another show with Mark Hunnaman again. Um, but anyways, if you want to get together next week and do a recording of your uh just That's you great. reading your testimony. Yeah, we and can do that. And if you want to expand on it or whatever, go ahead and do that. 
Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I won't, I won't interrupt you, and if, and if you kind of just just read the just read the, the testimony, and then I imagine this at least be a half an hour recording, and then uh, I can that would give me a good project after I get this video done is uh, oh, yeah. of, demon, of demons to work on doing like <laughs> a, a, a slideshow for it. You know, sure. you, you know what I'm saying? Because you've given me a lot of the images already to use. If you want me, that's what you want me to do, and then. It's just yeah. a matter of timing it up. So. Great, great. All right, all right. Uh, so. Great speaking to you. Yeah. Remember, this is Skype, so if it's just like we got to hang up. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, hey, you take care, and uh, let me know when you're free next week, and we'll try to work around it. Kind of like what, like I said, Ivani. Uh, that's what I did with her. So. Yeah. No, because I, I saw that, but I read it, so I didn't listen to her, but I read her article, and I thought, wow, it took me 40 minutes to read what it took me 10 minutes to read, but yeah, that's fine, we can do that, and um, I can do one evening in a week to do that, that's no problem. Yeah, sounds great, thank you, just let me know. Right. God cool. bless you, God bless you, and... Uh, God bless you. Yeah, do you take care. When's it going to go out? Tomorrow. Oh, uh, we'll see. Sometime in the next couple of days. I mean, I got another interview in uh, three hours. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't even taken a shower yet. It's already three. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. And I haven't eaten anything either. You should update your profile picture. No one knows what you look like. No one knows what I look like. No. Well, probably there's a reason for it. I don't really want to promote myself, you know what I mean? I know, but I always... I'm not that good looking anyways. Who wants to look at me? My gosh. I'm scary looking. You know, it's like, hey, what's that guy? <laughs> I mean, you saw a couple images of me. So you mean, I'm turning I'm into... Thinking, gr- I'm looking at one now, yeah. I'm looking like a mountain man now. Instead of the <laughs> I'm looking at the one of you and your son. You look nice. nice. Yeah, I did back then, didn't I? That's when I was doing the treating the MS with uh, nutrition and all that. I actually got off all the medicine and then I had shingles and that was the end of that. But um, I was going to be a poster, poster child for M- how to treat MS through uh, organic food and nutrition, you know what I mean? And uh, get off the processed food and all that kind of stuff. But um, easier said than done and it did make a big difference. But now I'm like 50 pounds heavier than there then and I'm a... Uh, I don't eat that much. It's just, uh, it's just, I'm getting older and I'm sick. You get sick and you die. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's bad. No, it's not. You gotta Are you single? Like everybody you, else, you know. Are you single uh, and sad, lonely? No, I'm not the, I'm not the least bit lonely or sad. <laughs> I got my Lord and Savior Jesus. I know. I, 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 I mean, I really do. I, I mean, 